workshop. Uh, let me introduce our guest. Uh, start, and thanks a lot to, first of all, thanks a lot to all the students. This, uh, I think that this is the crucial point of our uh, workshop, how to <coughs> test, how to try to work all together also in this quite strange condition. Uh, thanks a lot uh, to Professor Ilaria Valente, Dean of our school, that will introduce uh, this uh, uh, final event. Thanks a lot uh, to Professor Stefano Ronchi, that is the Rector Delegate for the Internalization of uh, Polytechnic of Milan. Uh, I'm not sure uh, perhaps uh, will arrive also Dr. Pier Francesco Maran, that is the Councillor for urban planning, green and agriculture of our city, Milan. And then uh, we will have our five visiting professor and thanks a lot to them for the great work that uh, they have done uh, for the uh, great energy that they uh, put in, in this experience. And uh, thanks to Roberto Cavalli from TU Delft, thanks to Hervé Dubois, to Donatella uh, from uh, Paris de, uh, Val de Seine. Thanks a lot to Donatella Fioretti from uh, Berlin to uh, Berlin, Jose Maria Sanchez from the Escuela Tecnica Superior de Madrid, and from uh, uh, thanks a lot to Sebastian Irazaval from Chile, from the Politecnica of Chile. Uh, I leave the floor to our Dean, Professor Elsa Valente. Feel free uh, to, to switch on your microphone when you want. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Camillo. Uh, good morning to everyone. OK, I'm sorry I was in the in the other room. Sorry, really sorry. Good morning, Donatella. Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> so we, we now we can start. Um, uh, so uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, to thank a lot uh, uh, all the students and uh, our teaching staff uh, that worked hard during those days. Um, we are at the end of this workshop done uh, in, uh, uh, as we said before, together with Camillo in, in a blended way. We had some students in our rooms in Milan and other at home with the professor in their own uh, universities. It's, it's the first time that we do that because the, the last uh, uh, Milano International Architecture Workshop was, uh, uh, was a, an, a normal workshop done in our rooms. Uh, and so it's, it's really uh, an, an experiment for us. Um, so I think that the goal of today is not just to uh, evaluate, and this is the, the uh, the main goal that we have today uh, and to, to have a look to the project uh, uh, of the students together and discuss together about uh, the, the project, but also to uh, check the, the, the potential of, of the work that uh, you did together online. Uh, because we, we can imagine to, to, to use this type of uh, experience blended to the, to, the, to the one in presence uh, during the next years. Um, and, and so this is, is something that I want to say to you and maybe Stefano Ronchi will explain better than me the perspective that we think to, 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 to have in Politecnico di Milano about this type of tools. And, uh, um, and so about the, the Porta Romana, Porta Romana, as probably you said, is a very difficult environment and topic, um, uh, but it is one uh, for sure of the areas that uh, are strategic, not just for the topic of the Olympic Games, but about the regeneration of, of Milan and uh, the regeneration of Milan in, in also in, in the post-COVID uh, uh, period. So, um, thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for to the, uh, to the um, uh, professor of Politecnico di Milano that uh, participated to the organization of, uh, of the workshop. So, I give the floor, I think, to Stefano Rocchi, our rector's delegate 
for internationalization. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Laria. Thank you, Camilla. Camillo, good morning to everybody. Uh, I welcome you to this final event. Uh, in let's say in my role of uh, delegate of director for uh, our international affairs uh, and let me say a few words about uh, this week uh, and how this week is uh, integrated in our strategy in our international strategy at our university uh, the, the milan international architecture workshop um, as far as i see involves students and professors from all over the world from different countries from different universities uh, and for this reason, I thank again, I, I'm the third person in giving thanks in, in these speeches. I really thank Ilaria, Camillo and all professors uh, from our university, from Politecnico and from uh, our partner universities uh, who made it possible. So thank you very much for organizing this workshop and for educating uh, our students in, in a complex project. As I, I, I told you before, this week is entirely in line with uh, our strategy and the positioning of our university. Uh, Politecnico wants to consolidate more and more uh, itself as a leading European university, of course, in the fields of architecture, design and, and engineering. And what does it mean? What does it mean being a European leading university in those fields? In our perspective, it means uh, becoming even more than, than today, but becoming more and more in the future a, an attraction hub, a hub able to attract resources from all over the world. And this hub would be able also to offer a number of different opportunities. So we see Politecnico has an attraction hub for international resources and a gate, an access gate for a number, a huge number of international opportunities. So we have this vision of a hub attracting and a gate an access gate to a deep number of different opportunities in the global landscape. What do we mean by resources? What does it mean attracting resources? Resources is a, a very wide dimension. Of course, we're speaking about people. So we want to attract students, professors, uh, staff from all over the world. So people is our key resource, our primary resource. But we, all, we also want to attract uh, competencies and skills with those people, of course. So we want to attract also competencies. We want to attract ideas, new ideas. We want also to attract assets and financial resources. So when we speak about an attraction hub for a number of different resources, we range from people through ideas to financial resources. And all those resources are coming from all over the world. When we have all those resources together with us in our campus, physical or virtual campus, we want to provide them with a number of different opportunities to interact with different people, different professors, different students from other institutions. We want to integrate those skills and competencies with other competencies and skills coming from other institutions. We want to integrate our ideas with other ideas worldwide. And we want also to integrate our assets, our equipment, our technologies and our financial resources with those basic international opportunities. So we have this kind of idea in mind. This workshop, the workshop that you're closing today, I think is an example of being a hub, attracting resources and skills from worldwide and giving those resources the opportunity to work into an international environment. As Ilaria was mentioning before, uh, we have launched this year during the pandemic crisis, the concept of international collaborative classroom. And this winter school uh, that has been running for 10 years, if I'm not wrong, so it's since 2010 or something uh, in that period that we started this week, is already an example of an international collaborative classrooms with international guests and international students working together on complex architecture projects. Now, during the pandemic crisis, we try to leverage the, the, the technology, we try to leverage virtual collaboration in order to uh, boost the idea of integrating internal and external resources. So we have hosted uh, a, a large number of international professors in our classrooms 
and we have also hosted a number of international, international. students in our classes. Uh, of course, that was not possible physically for the continuous situation, but this tool, this kind of uh, e virtual interaction, uh, of digital interaction, made it possible. And I'm really sure that this idea of integrating in a blended mode physical presence uh, and digital experience would be a, a boost, would be a catalyzer to further integrate this idea of international, international internal and external resources. We speak about digital collaboration, but real and not virtual. So our claim is make it digital, but not virtual. So try to leverage on the digital experience uh, in order to give a real experience to our students our and our teaching staff. And I have to say, not only at Politecnico di Milano, but the whole university system, the academia, was one of the uh, of the industries uh, reacting faster to the pandemic crisis. Uh, it was one year ago, uh, on the 21st of, uh, of February last year, that Politecnico had to cope with uh, the, the, the initial cases uh, of the coronavirus uh, situation. Uh, and then it spread all over Europe and all over the world. But I have to say, I, I, I've spoken with many different universities in Italy and, and, and abroad, and the university system in very few weeks uh, was able to react to the situation and move all education and research activities as far as possible online. And we didn't have one single student losing uh, the momentum uh, in the teaching experience. Uh, so I think that was a, a clear signal that the university world and academia uh, is one of the most reactive uh, and flexible industries we have in the world. And all of us should be uh, honored and glad to be part of this university system, uh, which is the cradle uh, of creating and sharing knowledge. Uh, and we have learned to do things in a different way. And in the future, for sure, we will leverage on this experience to further boost our uh, digital, but not virtual collaboration, digital and real uh, collaboration and experience among teaching staff and, and students. And I think this week is a clear example of digital and real uh, integration uh, among skills and competencies of people. Now, why we want to be a hub and, and an access gate at international level, and why we want to leverage on this blended mode of digital and, and real, uh, not because it's uh, a, a trend, being international uh, is full, of course, uh, but we think that international activities should not be pushed per se, but we believe that we have to be international, we have to be global, because we are believer in the value of diversity and integration of different cultures, different backgrounds and different perspectives. Because we are all facing global challenges uh, right now and in the future, uh, those challenges will become even more global. And we will be able to face those challenges only with a different set of cultures, backgrounds, approaches. In diversity, we will find the solutions to the, the faces and the challenges that we will face tomorrow. And one of the key elements of integrating diversity is being international. Because when you go international and you manage international activities, by definition, you are attracting diversity and you are integrating diversity to face those challenges. So internationalization for us is not a goal per se, but is a, a tool in order to face those challenges by integrating different cultures, different approaches and different perspectives. So this is our view of being a leading uh, international university, attracting resources, giving those resources global opportunities in order to integrate diversity to face our future challenges. Collaborating with our partners, of course, is a crucial element uh, of this strategy. And I thank again all our professors from our partner universities uh, contributing to this week. Uh, and I'm really hope that all of you will enjoy this final event, uh, which is, uh, let's say, the, 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 the clear uh, closing of a successful week. 
So thank you very much, uh, Ilaria, for inviting me, and I'm looking forward to, to see the final results. Thanks a lot, Professor Ronchi. Uh, perhaps I saw that uh, Dr. Francesco Maran is just arriving. Uh, I, I'm here. Sorry. Hi. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Hi. It's a pleasure. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, we just started with this event. That is the final event uh, of uh, the International Workshop uh, of Polytechnico of Milan where 150 students has been involved and uh, we decided to offer to our students and to our visiting professor to work on the uh, Porta Romana rail yard uh, for this uh, thinking about the Olympic Games uh, 2026. And uh, all the students uh, work very hard and try to uh, to offer us a reflection, a projectual reflection about this site. For this reason, we thought that uh, it would be quite interesting to share this experience also with the municipality. And for this reason, we, we thought that uh, it was very interesting to invite you to this presentation. So if you want, I, I leave uh, the microphone, the floor, to if you want to to introduce something about this e relationship between the Politecnico and the municipality. Good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you to invite me. Uh, probably you know very well now Scalo Romana, so I will not spend uh, many words uh, about it, but uh, it's uh, a long history for the city of Milan because uh, uh, Scala Romana is part uh, of a system of seven abandoned rail yards uh, and the city were debating uh, on what to do next uh, from uh, 2005, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. And uh, we, we voted uh, a general agreement uh, at the city council in 2017. In those years, uh, uh, the cooperation between the city and Politecnico di Milano on the future of rail yards has been very important. Uh, Politecnico helped us to study the contest um, of the rail yard first, uh, and then uh, they made um, many cooperation with the, the city administration on uh, defining the future of, um, of those areas. Uh, a place like Scalo Romana is interesting even because the contest uh, has changed a lot in those uh, 15 years uh, at least, because at the beginning uh, it was uh, an uh, abandoned area among, uh, I would say, at the end of the, uh, of the city, uh, because uh, behind uh, Scalo Romana there was uh, nothing interesting, just uh, old firms, uh, old industries, but uh, uh, it was like uh, it was uh, the border of the city uh, on, uh, on the side. When we approved the agreement uh, in 2017, uh, the city was uh, quite different because uh, behind uh, Scala Romana there was a Prada Foundation. Uh, after Prada Foundation, uh, some companies uh, uh, like Fastweb were opening their, their headquarters. Uh, Bocconi University was investing uh, in, uh, in their campus that is just uh, 500 meters far. A2A, that is the energy company owned by the city, has decided that its uh, headquarter will be uh, close uh, 50 meters far from Scala Romana. So it was not a, a, a border anymore but it was an empty place uh, dividing uh, different parts of the cities that they were working. Uh, of course, with problems. For example, actually, to go from the subway to Fondazione Prada or to um, Fastweb, uh, you will need more or less 20 minutes because you have to walk around Scala Romana. While when Scala Romana will be uh, a place where people can go, you, wi you will need just five, six minutes uh, uh, by walk. So it will be, uh, subway will be a sort of new infrastructure 
for uh, uh, the south uh, of Scalomana, even if uh, there is uh, uh, the subway line number three from three, dec three or four decades, three decades. So uh, it is an important chance for the city to flourish. Uh, uh, Scala Romana, uh, you know the, the rules, uh, probably you know the rules, uh, you know it's, uh, there is an open competition actually for the master plan. Uh, we imagine that by the, um, the park uh, we will uh, overcome also the rails and you can walk from one side to the other uh, in an easy way. Um, at the last uh, um, approval of the agreement, uh, we made a, a choice that was quite important for Olympic Games because uh, we densified a little uh, Scala Romana uh, compared to the previous agreement, uh, moving uh, volumetries uh, from uh, other um, areas, uh, in particular, if I'm not wrong, from Lambrate and Rogoredo, and we moved it uh, to Scala Romana. It was uh, uh, social housing volumetries. Uh, in the previous uh, agreement, there was uh, more or less no social housing in Scala Romana and in Scala Farini, that are the two biggest one. While uh, when we approved uh, the agreement, we said uh, we need social housing in every new neighborhood of the city. We don't, uh, I, I really appreciate Porta Nuova and city life. But we didn't want that uh, Scalo Romana and Scalo Farini would be the same. We want an area where every, everybody uh, can uh, imagine to live, uh, not just uh, rich people. So we had uh, an important uh, part of uh, social housing that has been very helpful when we candidate Milan and Cortina to host uh, Winter Olympic Games because uh, we didn't need uh, any new agreement on the rail yard. Uh, we have uh, the flexibility we need to host uh, the Olympic Village in Scala Romana using social housing. Uh, as you probably know, starting from this time, uh, to decide uh, the host of the Olympic Games, they had uh, more environmental um, requests than before. Uh, they were scared on uh, the history of uh, the Olympic Games, where you have uh, many uh, buildings, many structures that have been abandoned uh, after the Olympic Games. Uh, so the question of the reuse of the places uh, has been decisive. That is why we said that uh, first it will be an Olympic Games uh, and then it will be student housing. We are not far from Bocconi, but we imagine a student housing that is for all the city, not just for Bocconi University, even because we are so close to subway uh, and trains. Uh, we, you never know why you win uh, to host uh, an international event, but we are but for sure our dossier was based on the fact that all, all we will use for the Olympic Games, uh, we will reuse the after. Uh, in Milan, we, we, we don't have many investments. We have the Olympic Village in Scala Romana. We have the sports arena in uh, Santa Giulia that was uh, uh, quite helpful, uh, even because uh, actually we just have uh, uh, one form that is uh, uh, old fashioned, I'd say, from Massago. And um, in the pre-pandemic uh, city, everybody was uh, convinced that we need uh, another arena, modern one, because uh, Milan was, uh, uh, wasn't able to host all the events that uh, asked to come to Milan from sports and from concerts especially. So that are the two main investments in Milan. They are private investments because uh, even uh, uh, moving back to Scala Romana, uh, we, uh, you know that uh, we, they have the new, uh, new owners from a uh, uh, few months. Uh, it is a, a sort of alliance uh, of invest, investors of the neighborhood because there is a Coima that is the main one. 
but there is also Prada and there is Covivio that are the two main investors uh, of the south of Scala Romana even before. So uh, I'd say that uh, we can be trustful. We have investors that want to regenerate the area even because they have other investments in the area and they can create a, an economical growth uh, creating a, a sort of a, a cooperation between these different uh, investments. So we have uh, some scenarios actually. First, uh, of course it's not easy, but uh, they are, and of course we are, on the idea of trying uh, to complete uh, everything for 2026. It will, be, it will not be that easy. Uh, I thought from the beginning that we should work on two scenarios. One, 2026, that uh, more than ready should, be, should give the impression to be ready. And one, 2030, of the final scenario of Scala Romana. They are convinced that they, should, they could force and realize everything for 2026. And, uh, as a city administration, we will try to help uh, this direction because, of course, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, even for us the preferred one. Um, of course, uh, you have to uh, reimagine something the same because uh, not only uh, the residential side should become uh, student housing, but uh, we have to imagine that uh, on the park there will be some uh, structure that uh, they are needed just for Olympic Games, uh, but they will not last uh, uh, later. Uh, probably you will leave some sign, but you need more building that are uh, out of the rules of the rails, because uh, if uh, we decided that more than 50% of the rail should be green and public space, and we have uh, the, volum the volumetry to be developed, the, uh, uh, probably there will not be so much place uh, for uh, um, some uh, Olympic building, uh, like for the lunch time, etc., that will be uh, large and, and short. Uh, maybe some can could be reused, I think, for example, that probably we will need also some schools uh, in Scala Romana, but uh, uh, probably part of them will be uh, just a temporary building then, uh, and then it will be, change, uh, it will be changed. Uh, actually, so we are approving the master plan. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are in the tender for master plan, so in, uh, in April we will have a, a proposal of master plan. They are working. Uh, um, uh, they are working with, they are taking off the, the rails, uh, the, the, the rails actually. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we are not worried to be ready for 2026. Of course, uh, everything should be checked and the bureaucracy is always uh, a problem. Uh, the, the question we are uh, facing if we can work just on uh, one big scenario for 2026 and some adaptation uh, later, or uh, uh, two level scenarios, 2026 and 2030. That is the, uh, the main topic uh, I think uh, we will discover next uh, autumn when uh, it will be the, it will be, I think, the moment we will decide. Uh, uh, what is the speed of the change of, uh, of the terrain. Last point uh, I leave you is the fact that uh, Scala Romana, uh, that is the point I start to talk, it's not an island. Scala, Scala Romana actually is uh, it, uh, it, it's, uh, in the center of Milan. It's a four or five subway station far from uh, Piazza Duomo. It is uh, surrounded by a uh, neighborhood that, that they work. So the integration between Scala Romana and uh, the, uh, the neighborhoods around, it's uh, decisive. Uh, it's something Milan uh, is used to study. Uh, Polytechnic also co cooperated a lot, for example, with uh, 
eh, Porta Nuova in Porta Nuova has a similar situation with the neighborhood of Isola for Scala Romana the area of Piazza Trento, Via Crema and the Porta Romana subway station could be similar it's an old neighborhood many good shops uh, middle class uh, so uh, it's also an opportunity. Uh, they will have a park. They don't have a park. They will have a, a big park uh, for their neighborhoods. So that is uh, very important for us. We don't need a new island, but we need uh, a, a part of the city that is changed, even if it's, it will change a lot. For example, if you uh, go on, uh, on the Duomo and you uh, uh, you look at south, at the south of the city, you don't see any skyscraper. Uh, the panorama in the next year will change because uh, in Scala Romana probably there will be two or three tall buildings plus uh, uh, eight to a um, headquarter. So it will also change the landscape of Milan uh, uh, looking at the south. So it is a great chance because uh, I say that in the next decade for Milan, the change will be especially on south with uh, Scala Romana, with uh, Rogoredo, Santa Giulia. We too, as a city, uh, we bought uh, a new building for 1,000 uh, city workers uh, in uh, um, Corvetto, that is in the middle between Scala Romana and uh, Rogoredo. So our idea is that uh, the southeast uh, of Milan uh, will be the part uh, will, that will change more in the next uh, decade. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot uh, um, for, your, for your time, first of all, uh, for your contribution that are quite clear, the crucial rule of this site for the city. And uh, again, I think that also the relationship between a public institution as Politecnico and the municipality could be grow also on this specific topic. Okay, I think that we can shift and move directly to the, to the project of the students. Uh, I think that we can start with the first atelier led by Roberto Cavallo and uh, are you there? Come, okay. Hi, Roberto. Yes. And yes, feel free, I leave you the floor and feel free to start as you want. Thanks. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's also an honor for me to be the first in a row to, to present this morning with the group. Thanks a lot again for the organization and for everybody having us today here. I will start uh, sharing the screen. I, we prepare, I prepared a small presentation and then we will see a video which is made by the students. Uh, I don't know if you can see the screen now. Yeah, uh, perfectly. Yes, wait a second. I will try to make it work. Yes, can you see it right now? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yes, thanks a lot. Well, um, before I forget, I would like to thank a lot uh, the collaborators, uh, Yulia Batkova and Michele Porcelosi, they've done great work. Uh, without them, having me on a distance would have been almost impossible to do this work. Um, well, I just just to introduce a few points, we started from the understanding of the city as being um, um, a system that includes several systems, uh, among which uh, the urban um, fabric, the urban areas, um, but also infrastructure, mobility networks, programs, uses, public spaces, uh, and also utilities that are all connected to a, a, um, their own systems. And the challenge today is to uh, tie them then together and create synergies among one another. In order to do so, we, we have been launching a number of themes at the beginning of the uh, general themes, let, let's say, at the beginning of the workshop. The first is public space inside and outside uh, to, uh, let's say, leave actually behind us these conceptions of buildings and public space as being entities that are be handled in a different ways also in our practice. We need in the 21st century to think about them both simultaneously 
and the interconnection between indoors and outdoors, but also, and particularly the in-between spaces are getting more and more important. Contest, constantly changing urban conditions. I mean, uh, listening to Councillor Maran, we know that these kind of transformation areas are crucial, but things are changing along the way. Even planning procedures are changing along the way, progress are changing along the way, and uses are changing along the way. So this is something that we have to take into account while uh, conceiving transformation strategies for this part of our cities. That goes on also in the hybridizations of programs. There is more and more need in this new conception of our cities and more need for and space um, of uh, combining program, mixing program and program themselves are also getting uh, through a process of hybridization. We see many more new uh, constellation of programs coming together in our cities and the expectation is, is that in the coming future will be more and more going that direction. Of course, the impact of upcoming technologies uh, we are already in, but in the coming years that will increase um, from uh, more cleaner vehicles in our cities, new means of mobilities, hyperloops on, a, on a national and international levels, but also, uh, let's say, other kind of um, devices that will uncombine our life. And after all this and next to all this and integrated to all this, we have to keep our cities inclusive, democratic and open. We have to allow space also for the one being less fortunate. We have to think about the way of doing that while uh, transforming our cities. And that results in a number of assignments, really a long list uh, could, could have been going on with naming all the kind of things that we have to take into account and we can be inspired uh, about while designing. So while looking at the area, we've, we've been, uh, of course, um, taking into account the bigger picture of the metropolitan area of Milan and the railway um, um, uh, situations that were, by the way, greatly illustrated at the beginning of the workshop. And of course, also looking how those are relating to the cultural network of Milan uh, and how the two things are related one another. Indeed, we've been looking to the mobility system, the public transformation, uh, tra transformation uh, transportation system uh, that is now in place, but also to the future projections uh, that we could take into account, particularly the, um, let's say, the, um, the upgrade of the existing railway line that will have a, a kind of uh, influence on impact and will actually support also this location of Porta Romana, but also within the greater network of the city of Milan and the surrounding areas. And of course, also the mapping started with uh, detecting the, the functions, the, the relevant functions, also the relevant actors that are, uh, uh, let's say, act already uh, operating in the area. And at the same time, analyzing and looking at the type of green spaces, public spaces that are of a greater uh, interest or a greater uh, that are serving also um, a much greater uh, goal in the city, not only an ecological one, but also a social and uh, a social one. And um, along with the green network, we have been looking also at the types of green, uh, the one more urban, the one uh, suburban, and um, integrated that also with having look at uh, uh, geomorphology of this place. And of course, uh, looking at the instructions, looking oh, at, the yeah. at the preliminary findings uh, that were given also at the competition. You can see it here, uh, summarized very well, uh, the new project of the A2A, the Fondazione Prada, the symbiosis project, but also the challenge of um, um, connecting the public transportation and the access points towards the area. Here you can see a number of features that are, let, let's say, fitting in this row of uh, episodes, uh, a number of things that are quite interesting one another. Of course, one of the biggest challenges is to create proper uh, connections to these fragments, but also to perhaps take advantage of the fact that this location has been always a kind of enclave in the city to maybe uh, reserve a little bit of space for some, um, some thoughts, some kind of more intimate space uh, in this part of our cities. 
this is the end of the presentation. So uh, there is a student, Alessia Jenna, that will share her screen right now with the video. So I will say now sit back, fasten your seat belt because you will see six groups of students presenting their presentation in six videos, all collated to one another in 16 minutes, 16 minutes, one six. Alessia, I don't know if you are ready to yes, do I'm that. Ready. Yes, so please share your screen. Yes, and activate your video when it's done. Can you hear it? No. Okay, yes. sorry. We, we get started. Maybe you have, you have to put the volume a little bit higher on your computer. I'm sorry for this, but this is inevitable. Good morning, everyone. We are group one. After the general analysis, first we consider the horizontal axis as a limitation, and under the influences of the context, we also link this vertical axis. Considering of Prada Fondazione and the Plaza Lodi, we put the main entrance in these two parts. Then we try to find another secondary axis to help us understand the plot better. And then we try to think about the volumes. We keep this building as a boundary. We also consider the future project about hate to hate tower. Here show how we consider the relationship with the railways. We make some part uncovered and he showed the different possibility for this condition. And some part the railway will be covered and we can use different activities to link both sides. For example, he will design this exhibition wall for artists, and he can use a running part to link different parts. Here we can see our master plan. We organize it in three main different zones. The East Park for arts and cultural activity, while for the East Park we put the residential building. For the upper one will be the student housing, for the down one will be the social housing. About the Central Park, we consider it as a leisure space to link both sides. And it also is provides some restaurants and bars. All these things will follow the influence of the main access we mentioned before, that help us to define space and connect from west to east. From taxonometric, it shows clearly about how the project links with the, these different access. We also would like to zoom in these two public spaces. One is on the station Porta, Porta Romana Plaza and the other is located in front of Prada, Prada Foundation. This is the station uh, Plaza. We consider it as an urban public space and we use the stairs as a boundary to define the character. And we also use the same geometric to follow our main tone. And uh, here the references to show about how the ground will link with the uh, nature. And uh, here shows uh, how geometric works. And here's another piazza near the uh, Prada Fondizione. Since here is our art part, so we consider this piazza as an open art hall. And here's the references about uh, how a uh, pavilion works. Mm, and the last uh, slide shows uh, the collage about uh, how uh, this light and free uh, pavilion works on the air. And also how our project works with the urban context. That's all. Thank you. Now group two. Hello everybody, we are group two and this is our recorded presentation about the Milano Porta Romana Ray Art project. So first of all, we started analyzing the main issues uh, of the area, which uh, mainly are the presence of barriers, the discontinuity of the transportation system and some undeveloped and junction. So then we came up uh, with uh, our strategy. We first focused on two uh, focal points and then from uh, here we decided uh, to break uh, the uh, rigidity of the uh, linear uh, railway railway and so we decided to move uh, the soil and uh, create uh, a, a new pattern uh, that connects uh, all the parts. Um, so then uh, we came up with the function, which is a new railway station, the housing part, uh, and a new commercial hub with also the integration of urban farming. 
Uh, so then uh, we studied uh, the stages uh, of this project and we um, thought about having three different uh, stages. And we also focus on another important point according to us, which is the tactical urbanism that we are going to apply also in the project. So then we came up with our master plan. The main element of the master plan is the, this uh, uh, path that is a suspended path uh, and is a longitudinal and sinuous element that moves the soil. Uh, so the railway is uh, covered uh, on both sides by uh, a bastion and this path uh, is uh, both uh, pedestrian and cyclable. Uh, so here in the section we can see the, the path, we can see the hill uh, in the middle part, which is the most public part uh, with the commercial facilities, and then in the longitudinal section we can see all uh, uh, the path uh, that uh, crosses uh, all the area. So uh, the, here is a uh, axonometry image, and we use uh, geography uh, organize, to organize the path road and uh, fun, 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 function areas to uh, make people participate in, the, in the, our project as much as possible. In this focus, you can notice the station with the two pedestrian roofs that run along the railway station and it connect with the new bastion. The second focus point, we decided to do the uh, hill under the, the in the commercial hub. We it's focused on the entrance and the and, and the space between the uh, the shops. Thank you uh, for your attention. We are done. Group three. Hello everyone. We are group number three, and our project is Porto Romano Poverty Border. We have started the concept by studying the existing network. There is presence of Metro Line 3 that connects the area to the city center. Also, there is presence of Paco Agricola suit in the south and some closed and open blue infrastructure in the area. Here is the master plan of, of our project, which will be explained in the next slide. The water channel, railway buffer loops and the two parks, urban and productive connect station on both sides of the site. Connection from south to north are done by creating pedestrian and cyclist bridges and ramps. But to reduce noise and dust pollution, we introduced slope railway buffer with leisure and green areas. Underneath the slope, uh, there is a space used for car parking and technical storage. There is a water feature connecting east to west. Uh, connections, uh, pedestrian cyclist connections connecting uh, north to south, and uh, two, uh, two, one exists two proposed uh, stations. We also took into consideration some of the existing buildings and that helped us locate the urban part, uh, squares uh, relating to the entry points of the site. Uh, the north part is the urban park uh, and the south side is the green productive area. There's a flower garden uh, in front of Fundaciana Prada. And we also kept uh, some parts of the existing wall. Here are the buildings. Uh, uh, commercial and office buildings are located closer to the squares and residential buildings closer to the park area. All the implementation of urban areas and public spaces will be done in the first phase until 2023. The construction of areas related to Olympic Village as well as the transit hubs will be finished in phase two till 2026 and the rest will be done in the third phase. Yeah, we have two focus elements. Let's start with the first one, urban urban square. You can see there is a big slope uh, about the water and it connected the two urban squares in the south and east. And uh, the, the first collage shows the environment of the uh, square. People can sit here and have a rest. Uh, and the second one shows the open space near the water. People can stay here and have some water related, related activities. The flower garden in front of Fundaciana Prada is used for uh, fashion shows, outdoor events, exhibitions, and leisure activities. This collage shows uh, existing capital with uh, holes cut in it, flower garden behind it, water channel, and 
a seating area on the sloped wall, and also the connection bridges. This is the final collage, and that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Group four. Hello. Hi. We are group four and our project is called the buffer zone. We use this graphic to underline the importance of our plot in its position right at the border between the high and the low density of the city. From there, we pinpointed and chose four locations that we would like to connect to our plot. San Siro, San Cristoforo, Asagunano Fiori, and finally, Parco Agricolo Sud. On a smaller scale, we wanted to use our plot as a connection between the city and the agricultural part, while at the same time reinforcing the horizontal green connection. We chose our main axis around which we started to create green spaces, which would attract people to come to our plot from both the north and the south side. From there, we decided to create two focal points on the east and on the west side, a new station and a cultural center. All of this led us to the distribution of the built space and connections around the plot. This is our master plan where you can see the distribution of the space. We have larger connections between the north and the south side. For example, the new tower square, which will connect the metro station of Piazza Lodi with our new Porta Romana station. And in this exploded axonometry, you can better see how we have done our space. Yeah, all the functions we have in our proposal, first the commercial tower and the station, which will serve as a border to Plaza Lodi and a, a monument introduction to our space. Then the Olympic villages that will become students' residence, residence. In the middle, we will have the leisure space and our market and our organic and theater. On the west side, we will have the cultural center and a flexible event space with the temporary buildings. These are our section in which you can see the different treatment of the slopes and area. In the street detail elevations, we wanted to show the human scale feeling of walking around our plot. This axonometry section, on the other hand, focuses entirely on our treatment of the railway and its movement. We have chosen to have completely covered, semi-covered and doper railway. The timeline shows the phases of construction and the calculations show we have to meet the requirements given by the Olympic Committee. These are all our important points of the project, starting with the new station. This is the view of the organic amphitheatre. This is a big open space on the north side that will serve as a buffer zone between the two urban densities. And uh, this is the space in front of the foundation product showing the train coming out of the covered railway in order to fill the events. This is the leisure space between the residential area, clearly showing the collection with the stations as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Group five. Hello, we are group five, and the title of our project named Recharge the Spine of Milan. And here is our general analysis, containing three parts, the railway, the green land, and the potential activities. We hope to connect the open green space and the potential activity space through the important stations at the design point. And here is our diagram of the concept the first is linear connection, the second is the transversal connection, and the third is the different themes. And we also uh, analyze the different users and the movements and the greenery as corridors. First, we created uh, the green corridors that would go along the rail routes and be in a green bar barrier and a filter for the noise. Then we introduced the bridge systems that serve as the connectors and a vast green area for recreational activities and with various types of plants and flowers. And the areas enclosed by this bridge we treat as different themes, both in functional and architectural language. So here we propose a timeline of the project, which is divided into three phases. The first phase will focus on Olympic Village and start several uh, exhibition pavilions. The second phase will focus on the renovation of existing buildings, some sports facilities, and also start the linear park. And the final phase will start from some new constructions like office buildings. And uh, here is the asymmetric drawing of the site, which uh, we can see the concept of the green corridor. And, and also from these two sections, here we can find some views from the greenery. And this is one of our catalyst part, which is the mainly used for exhibitions and holding events. We use arc shaped walls with different heights to divide different areas of the venue and place some fixed buildings for long time use. Other places divided by curved walls are used for outdoor exhibitions. The narrow wide is a gallery and the wide space is used for temporary exhibition halls, large sculptures or experimental installations. 
which can be arranged according to the needs of different requirements. And this is the master plan of this part. Our second catalyst point would be the commercial and business district and would be connected to 808 Tower and the Symbiosis Project. It's located on the corner of Piazzale Lodi and its main idea would be to combine the busy office area with the rich landscape, uh, green landscape. Thank you. Everyone, we... Group six. Would like to present our project yard of coalescence so to begin with we analyzed all the projects that were happening at this uh, city level of milan itself and around the neighborhood of porto romana we found that various projects were happening both at uh, both in the urban fabric and in the environmental aspects as well um, we found that the green corridors projects was quite close to porto romana and could be taken into consideration and this plays a major part in our uh, in our uh, uh, master plan as well and here we analyze of railway infrastructure hubs and the commercial and cultural area, and also we compare the other way the art about with our uh, site. And also, uh, the in here we analyze the context of the morphologies because we have different morphologies surroundings of our site. So by taking into consideration all that was happening at regional and at the site level itself, our idea was to connect the urban north to the south, where the site acts as a point of amalgamation, and that's why we call this as the yard of coalescence. Uh, we started the design process by identifying the polarities that we were going to retain uh, by identifying uh, uh, areas which could be densified, establishing the access with the urban context and by uh, identifying the green corridors which we already spoke about. So coming to our master plan, we found the southern part of the site was uh, devoted to the communities, whereas the northern part was devoted to activities, uh, Olympic activities as well as the housing. The eastern part was the commercial center around Korsanurdi uh, and then the western part is the Toscana station. The main point was to connect the access of uh, Prada and Symbiosis with uh, Piazza Trento by using a green mound, where uh, the right half of the site is connected by using pedestrian uh, bridges. And the views we choose, the first play we concentrated on the slope mound area. Here is multi-fund activity space like the, this one OAT for outdoor events. The second is the housing area. We have the two types. First is eight stories and the second one is 13 stories. We designed it like vertical garden with the rhythm of balcony. And here we can see that the, our renders of the, our uh, buildings. So uh, in the end, uh, we are using, we are designing this uh, project for the Olympic with uh, Olympic. Uh, but after the Olympics, we will use these different functions such as social housing and the student housing. So this area is going to be, uh, they're going to use this area for like long time. So thank you everyone and thank you for listening to us. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Alessia. You can stop and sh sharing your screen. I will take you very long. I would like to finish this to thank all students. As you have seen, we have chosen the very, very democratic way. All students have had at least a word into the presentation. And that's the way we have been proceeding working this week. So thank you a lot to all students. And I will give the word back to Camilo probably. Hervé will be the next one in a row, but please, Camilo, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Roberto, for all your projects. Very uh, interesting. We decided not to uh, insert the critics at the end of each of you, but we decided perhaps it would be better to show all the different five um, atelier workshop at, at the end uh, to take the time to discuss all together. So. Thanks. Uh, please, uh, Hervé, feel free to switch on your microphone. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's open, I think. Uh, maybe I have to see with uh, Ariana and Silvio, who worked with me, and I, that I want to thank a lot because, uh, of course, uh, we made the team, uh, as we made the team also with the students. Uh, yes, see, to, to see if it's possible to share the. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I can share the screen. Uh, just one second. Uh, please tell me if you can see that. Yes. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. OK, thank you. I try to put that. OK. okay. So um, I will start for, for so a few minutes to explain how we worked the, the process. And then uh, each group of students will explain uh, his uh, own uh, specific uh, work. Uh, we can go 
here is a presentation. Here's a group of uh, the students uh, and uh, also uh, the group who worked on, the, on this uh, project. Um, and then major theme, but we will uh, discover it uh, later uh, towards sky and, uh, and the ground floor. Uh, then we can go to the first uh, um, time of the design process. Uh, at first, when we meet uh, on the 4th of February, we ask uh, each student to, uh, to make a free uh, approach uh, on the site. So when we saw us uh, on Friday, uh, each one could uh, present some uh, intentions and it was already a uh, a way to understand uh, um, the, the uh, people and also the experience uh, we had. And then, uh, first day, we, uh, next uh, slide, we decide <clears throat> to uh, try to work together. That's uh, quite difficult, one week and uh, maybe 25, 30 students. Uh, and so we decide of an axiom, uh, which was a common objective, and this objective is to build an elevated public space capable of linking the city to the landscape and uh, in particular to the mountain because in this side we in this uh, photo we can see the relations uh, strong potential relation to the uh, mountain with the city but in fact when you are in it's uh, rare to, to 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 see it so and then we di we divided the, the work between eight groups each group had to treat an analysis or work, for instance, 3D models, uh, photograph, uh, uh, work on history, urban, urban rules, Olympic games. And in the same time, they had to uh, develop a, a proposal around a particular theme. It could be, for instance, mobility or relation or something. Uh, so uh, different different types. Each group uh, worked like that uh, in a different direction. Um, and uh, we we when we discuss, we realize that two groups uh, propose uh, um, to work on a structure on general structure linked to the train line. Uh, uh, with the idea of uh, uh, unifying the, the work and trying to work on a vertical city and see, with the principle of uh, and one group uh, uh, try to, 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 to identify, but maybe we can see the next uh, uh, slide, um, a work on the, on a line linked to the train line and with uh, next slide uh, the idea of a double structure, a primary structure, uh, common uh, and uh, associated with the networks, and the second, lighter and uh, substitutable, uh, that allows the city to change uh, over time. Next time, next uh, slide. And from this principle, we decide to divide the work on this line between the eight groups. Uh, one uh, group uh, has to uh, work, you can uh, uh, see the next, yes, has to work uh, on the ground floor and to organize also relation with the city and they, they put on the, the principle of uh, uh, little forest, but we, we, they will explain then to, to, to that links the, uh, the line. Uh, next one. Uh, next. Then, uh, we divide the, the line in six parts, uh, and each part is uh, developed by, by a group uh, with this common rule of uh, the, the structure 10 by, by 10 meters and the uh, second structure uh, that they had to decide uh, in a way to uh, organize the relation between ground floor and upper public space. And the, uh, here are some examples. Uh, you can, next one. We try to, to work a lot about the section. Here you can see, for instance, the two first uh, uh, images are the same group working at the beginning uh, and uh, developing uh, the idea of the uh, section and the relation between ground floor and upper floor through the section. Next one. And then the last uh, group had to uh, coordinate uh, the 
uh, upper public space. And also, uh, through you can see uh, through three uh, points in relation with the, with the ground floor. And it will be uh, through plans, through general uh, organization, and also <coughs> trying to imagine the, the space uh, above. The interest of this organization was to uh, permit to uh, cross uh, uh, advices during the, the, the process. Uh, we, uh, the, it was impossible to, 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 to work only on this part, but each group had to uh, discuss at, at least with two other groups, ground floor and upper floor, or maybe also uh, who is uh, right and, uh, or left, and uh, for the common coordinators uh, of the ground floor and upper floor, of course, with uh, all the groups. And so uh, the objective of all this process uh, was to allow a common work uh, and with a common, uh, this common objective, with the idea of crossing during the process, so the, the point of view, uh, in order to feel participating in the development of a project that goes far beyond uh, uh, era, uh, era of uh, mastery, its era of control. The idea of participating to the whole process with a, uh, with a little part. And so now uh, maybe we can listen to uh, each group to explain uh, the way they worked until the end. Thank you. Maybe group seven that can begin. Uh, yes, in this axonometric, we show the project uh, in its totality. So this big and one kilometer long linear infrastructure that uh, represents uh, also a new idea of city, elevated from the ground floor and uh, stretching over the train line. Um, the project, like the professor said, has been composed uh, like a patchwork of the works of different groups, uh, unified not only by the common structural idea, but also by the rooftop uh, that is like a new ground for the city, a uh, street in the sky, hosting public activities in social spaces, and the ground level that has been studied as a performative uh, landscape. So this is the whole view. And uh, in the next uh, slide, um, our, we show the, the basic design layers that have been defined together after a dialogue um, between the different groups and that represented the basic foreground for the common work, making possible to unify all the parts in, in the one kilometer long infrastructure. Um, about the ground level, Mm, we try to define it with in mind the, the idea of a performative landscape, so a landscape that plays ecological, social and cultural roles at the same time, including uh, urban forestry, the use of water for multiple purposes like wetland, like uh, um, for agricultural purposes and for entertainment, uh, agriculture and uh, urban connections. And we did this according a decreasing density principle, so uh, surrounding our linear new city, uh, urban forests that fade into agricultural and public squares, and then the, the city. Um, okay, as we can see also in the diagram in the next slide are visible um, different areas. Um, so we have the forest, but we have also the, the wetland in the northern part, two new squares, one in front of Prada and one uh, in correspondence with the, with the metro and um, the agricultural lands that stretches, uh, especially in the southern part, uh, um, in relation with Parco Agricolo Sud. Um, also, we have defined different types of uh, connection, north-south, some more dynamics that stretches into, into the landscape and uh, connect also with the building and are other more straight and direct. And also some green corridors that passes through the public areas of the building, let's say. Um, we can go on. And in this uh, diagram, we show the, the possible activities, uh, so an abacus of possible activities that could be done in the different parts of, the, of uh, our area. Um, and uh, in the next slide, we show the two, two sections, the emphasizing especially the ramps and uh, the landscape, um, to see this connection with the surrounding, uh, with uh, our building. And, and then there is a longer section showing uh, the whole facade of the building and uh, the landscape uh, uh, in front of it. Um, finally, we concluded with some views and some colleges, more to give an idea of the atmosphere of um, these uh, open areas. And this is uh, the part of our group. Okay. No, there's the group one. 
Mm. Yes. Um, so we, Group 1, were tasked with handling the westernmost portion of the entire building. Um, we kind of saw this as an opportunity in a sense because of the raised elevation of the street um, where the train would go under a bridge to have um, a direct access on this upper ground plane, which was a very important concept that Professor Dubois was trying to really instill in the project, having the total ground plane and the raised public platform above the train line. So here you can see the very rigid um, grid section throughout the entire structure and it gave us actually a lot of freedom to try and um, pull proportions and masses within that but also have circulation which would um, intertwine with the different um, aspects of the design and create something which you can see here which is the spire. Next slide please. So the uh, you can see the diagram in the top right hand corner. This denotion of having the uh, the Duomo and the Madonna on the top as well as having this new addition in the Porta Romana section was almost like the Olympic flame. So for the symbolism of the Olympics having this as the entry point to the site and the project um, and after the Olympics which is the more substantial portion of time it would just be another vantage point in Milan which are highly successful and highly desirable to go to as tourists. Um, and you can see along the bottom the diagrams that we started to um, use to understand how the space could work, denoting the social housing um, and the Olympic housing within this mass and how people would use the private, uh, public and semi-public planes in different ways and different access to each part. Next one, please. And just some more sections to emphasise uh, the southern advantage as well. Um, where you could really see the masses were kind of pushed and pulled in a way where you could really have those semi-private areas um, given that this portion was dedicated solely to housing um, in the middle. It was very important while also keeping that spire as the grand public access. Next one please. Um, so the idea as well was to have very large housing which could be pulled and pulled um, proportioned into different um, housing arrangements depending on what we would need it to do in the future. So for the Olympics having um, very versatile housing is advantageous but again the Olympics is such a short period of time in this project. Having a housing condition which could suit the Milanese people for now and different housing and uh, family configurations in the future is really important for the longevity of the site and that's us. Thank you very much. Okay, group uh, four, uh, five, excuse me, area two. Hi. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. So, so in area two, we've been working on the continuous circulation. Uh, we thought it could be interesting to insert a continuous loop in this kind of framework to somehow accommodate different activities and also to create connections and accessibility both in terms of the horizontal and the vertical directions. And we can go on. Next one, please. So um, this, is the, uh, this is the organization of our programs. So regarding to the Prada Foundation and the Symbiosis project nearby, we thought there are some potentialities to use culture as a backbone to dominate the whole space. And we create a bridge in the north south direction. We use it for galleries, exhibitions, ex uh, etc., to boost the, the public space. And also to guide people to the roof garden to enjoy the outdoor events and the beautiful sceneries. So basically the logic of our uh, arrangement is we use the continuous loop and the very dynamic vertical cultural bridge as two systems to work to, to uh, work together. And next one, please. And as my colleague says, we are trying to establish connection between different layers. The orange blocks in the section are the loop where people can walk through. And in the third picture, people from the bridge can walk to upper levels either from the loop or they can access from the central core for cultural use. Next, please. And in plan, you can see the bridge that connects south and north and it intersects with the main building. On each floor, there are entrances to the loop. And on the fifth floor, there is an open theater that is connected to the rooftop. Next, please. 
intersection and view of our design and we can also see the cultural corridor bridge that connect the south and the north and uh, the loop circulation in orange to connect all the layers in our design and next please and then is the typology typologies of our loop and the right image is the view around the loop we can see the another is the cultural corridor view of some exhibition and galleries and that's all thank you now the group eight on area three yeah um for area three we have divided the structure above the tracks into three functions uh, the first floor the first level is the garden which is connected to the ground floor of the site and can mitigate a part of the noise from the trains and the second level is the residential area and there will be four modes of housing which will be combined to form the whole residential area and the third level includes the entertainment and services which will have some cafe reading rooms and other functions many connected to the roof next please uh, in terms of the section and the plans in addition to its own function each floor will be connected to the public space through the corridors the public space on the top floor provides a space for people to have a rest and enjoy the view uh, the public space in the housing area provides the opportunities for activities and uh, can chill talk with others. And the garden area is the uh, healing experience combined with uh, natural elements. Uh, next, please. Um, finally, about the sections and the elevations, the staggered spatial experience both vertically and uh, horizontally uh, offers more possibilities for the space transformation. Uh, that's more for our area. Thank you. Now, uh, area four with group three. Okay. Uh, since the Porto Romano rail yard is close to agriculture part in the south, so our main idea was to use this opportunity to make a connection between the urban context and the countryside, which is now just separated by a simple fence. So we try to make a link between the agriculture and the rail yard through the existing green area and define them uh, in a more qualitative way and bring the nature inside the city through the green corridor. Next, please. And then uh, the idea of vertical farm came to our mind to extend this new greenery also vertically to connect the ground level to the roof for our new vertical city. Next. Uh, and then uh, we try to spread this new greenery to all floors and tanks to modular system. Uh, we can have different type of units for social housing with common and private open spaces. In this perspective section, uh, we wanted to show the social housing unit with private and common uh, yards. And in the right section, you can uh, see how the vertical farms are, uh, in, are in top of each other, which is fully protected environmentally. And you can go up with this ramp, which is orbiting uh, around the vertical farms. Next, please. And uh, this is the longitudinal section to show the relationship between the, the vertical farm and the social housing and how the farm is spread in uh, each floors. And these are the plans of uh, the social housing and also the, uh, the farms, uh, which is composed of uh, full and voids in the plan. Uh, as I said, to have uh, different open spaces, uh, common and private for each uh, unit. Next, please. And uh, finally, this is the perspective view of our work. To uh, and we can see the whole uh, building here and uh, which uh, and the vertical farm in the uh, center of the building. Thank you. 
Area five for group four. Sorry, it's not corresponding. Yes, when it comes to area five, we aim to be the limelight of different streets, translating traditional elements into modern ones next. We use RGT elements to create, organize the space next. Through longitudinal section parts, we can see this kind of arch elements create spatial space quality. We arrange the whole building for the artists, especially the loft housing for them. Next. And transversal section parts, we can see more specifically how each space combined together. Next. On ground and first floors, it appears that the long street walls create relatively flowing space inside. Next. The housing floors, here we can see the lofts of artists combined with co-working spaces. Next. Here are two facades showing two different typologies of architectural languages we'd like to express. The material feeling we take for this area consists by the concrete arch T elements and polycarbonate walls. Next. By the small scale of people and cycling compared with the building heights, we can fill in the architectural scale we want to create next. Our concept relating perspectives from streets, the project filling the gaps between buildings on both sides next. Finally, it's our axonometric view of our project. Thank you. Next group, uh, next group please. Thank you very much. And now the end of the line with uh, group six, area six, and then we will see the top floor. Good morning. So we started by focusing on the context and analyzing all the possible connection between the different parts of the area and choosing the best way to connect from north to south and from east to west, um, since it's a crucial part of our project. Um, since it is the sixth area and the final part of the building and it's closer to Corso Lodi and Piazzale Lodi. Next please. For the transversal connection we connected the building with two bridges one on Piazzale Lodi and the other one uh, to Corso Lodi. Uh, next please. The transversal connection on the first floor cuts the building and creates a plaza that generates a knot between the first floor uh, Corso Lodi and Piazzale Lodi. And the diagonal connection creates a second plaza on the first, fourth floor that becomes a space where you can stop and watch Milano skyline, rest or access to other public spaces and continues generating a total connection on the building going from the first floor to the rooftop, as you can see in the next slide, please. Uh, the design we selected, uh, for the design we selected a module of five foot per five out of the module of 10 per 10. Um, and we subtract some modulus from the um, south elevation, leaving a grid that shows the missing modules and the skeleton of the building, creating a more open facade with terraces. And in the northern facade, we manage the vertical connection visible from Piazzale Lodi, alternating stairs inside the building and outside of it. Thanks. Thank you. And to finish, uh, the group two, the top on the fourth part. Um, good, uh, good morning. Uh, so for our part, uh, we wanted, uh, we worked on the public space on the rooftop. Uh, so the idea was to have another ground floor on the rooftop and have a, co a continuous public space that runs from east to west and um, uh, emphasize the linear, linearity of the rail, uh, rail yard below. Uh, then uh, we uh, also have these three bricks that are used to uh, that are used as vertical connections to um, connect the ground to the rooftop and are also used for various functions. And um, also, and the, uh, the the con uh, to maintain the continuity from the ground floor to the rooftop. And next, please. Uh, so here we can see the exonometry of the uh, uh, public vertical spaces with the main structure, the rooftop that is continuous throughout, the double height, white spaces and the built spaces in between that can be used for various functions uh, like uh, galleries or indoor sports activities and uh, can be changed throughout the year. And then the ramps for easy movement or slow movement to, towards the top while uh, enjoying the view of the outside uh, context and the fast movement through the course that we have. 
And then the last thing is the public platform that is above the rail and uh, is also continuous, just like uh, the rooftop. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is a, a view of the public space in which we can see the block masses uh, with the uh, double or triple heights with greenery and uh, the platforms that are provided for uh, public activities and also the ramps uh, that connect uh, that go from the bottom to the top and uh, create a continuous uh, movement throughout. Next please. So we will now embark on a promenade to conclude this long walk throughout our vertical city that we now did from west to east. And through this sequence of pictures, we will circle back to our starting point, so from east to west. Our street in the sky is not only a horizontal line, but also links uh, to the bottom levels through a series of volumes and voids. Each of the roof portions aims at linking the projects together while respecting the spirit of each area. We're starting here at the eastern end of our building with the sport dedicated area. Next, please. Following, as we move towards west, we progress to the artistic production area. On this floor, on this roof floor, we find a sequence of workshop spaces and industrial lights that enlighten the lower floors. Next, please. Always moving forward, we enter the area on top of the vertical farm. The theme of urban farming and food resilience is extensively addressed on this portion, providing users with gardening spaces, all the while serving as another type of decorative greenery for the linear promenade. Next, please. So, um, as you can see, the visible structure and the linear path continues. Uh, this is the roof uh, of zone three that hosts residential on the first two floors and restaurants and cafes, both on the last floor and on the rooftop. There are some green areas and a playground and libraries that uh, all act as a complementary services to the residents. Uh, there are also so, uh, some uh, glass boxes on the roof uh, to provide some light to the restaurants below. Uh, next. So moving to the next block uh, that hosts the cultural hub, uh, we can clearly see the visible uh, vertical uh, connection between the roof uh, uh, and the lower uh, floor throughout the, um, through the amphitheater that is also accessible from the below floor as well. Uh, this area has an atmosphere that's facing the private foundation. And next, so this is the last uh, view uh, uh, of the top of the residential block that is accessible from uh, cords extended from the building. Here we can have some uh, outdoor activities such as playgrounds for the kids and study areas for the students, uh, and also areas for outdoor cinema and movie screening, uh, and also cafes and restaurants that could be enjoyed by the residents. Um, next. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. It's uh, finished. So uh, I will just thank you one more time, uh, all the group, and for the intensity of the work and the capacity also to work together. Of course, we could discuss then uh, about the project. It will be interesting. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Hervé. Thanks all to the students. Now we can have a little break. It's 10 minutes, no more, nine minutes, and we can start again uh, at uh, a quarter to 12. 10 minutes, we come back here. Okay. For the last three uh, presentation. Okay, thanks. Thanks.
Okay, so I think that we can start again after a coffee. <laughs> and uh, I would like to invite uh, Professoressa Donatella Fioretti to switch on. Hi, hi, Donatella. Hi, and hi everybody. Feel free, to, feel free to start. Okay, so I will make just a very, very short introduction. I want to uh, give as, as soon as possible the floor to the student. So just uh, um, so the student were asked to work on three different levels. So on a landscape level, uh, urban concept and uh, a typological level. They were asked to work not uh, less generic as possible to have a, a strong urban concept. Uh, we worked with uh, um, with four groups and uh, they were asked to prepare a video. Each of uh, each group will show you a video. And um, yes, I think that we can begin. And I just want to uh, really, really thank uh, Alessandro and Gianluca who were really irreplaceable. Thank you very much for your collaboration. So let's go. Hello everyone, we are group one from Professor Donatello. Our main idea is enclosing the site with a multibolic belt adapted to diversified urban environments. There is a traditional midline special typology that an urban park is enclosed by courtyards. This typology is transformed into part of our belt formation. From urban analysis, with the railway at the limits, we intended to create a horizontal green belt to connect other green space. The Vaclama is important to connect downtown areas, Porto Romana, agriculture land, and Roman gates. There are a lot of urban joints around, such as the Prada Foundation and Piazza Trento. So we have the strategy, first, democrat the boundaries by buildings to enclose the street space, creating a central park inside. Integrate the existing building to belt along the north side, the belt is thicker than the south. Then introduce urban access to cut the belt and define access. Finally, adapt every fragment of the belt to surround the environment to form a unified and diversified belt. The entrance are on the Vaclama and Montova for their significant. Others are secondary portals in, in, in entrance called the Earth complete the system. The programs are mixed on the north are commercial, office and housing, and the south are social housing and plaza for events. The side buildings height are related to surrounding buildings. For architecture, we select four parts to depend the details. The first is East Building. The buildings adapt to form a recognizable boundary for the inner park. The courtyards between the tourist buildings are connected. There are two more basic units, a single room and a double room. For the northern part, existing buildings on the west is integrated into the belt and makes the main entrance. Courtyards becomes a reference for citizens to define themselves. In addition to the urban context, we have also a response to the uh, culture of Milan of architecture. The material of the facade facing the courtyards is glass break. For the western strap, we related the new building to existing factory house on the west uh, to, build sing to build a side relationship between both sides. 
the agronomic uh, uh, view of the building is uh, vast. On the ground floor and the first floor, we have great uh, public space for students. Upper floor is dormitory, and we use two different plants to create a variation in the facade. For the facade, we want to use the rest and arrangement of, of different windows to have dialogue with the garden and the west street. For the south, the boundary are enclosed by similar buildings, which create suburban contest. With astronomy, we can see better. For this social housing, we put two different housing types. In addition, there are also a public space on two corners. You can see two different types and this, they are different dimensions. For the park view, we, we also use the rest and different windows to respond to the inner park. Inside the building belt, we're also going to build a multi-identity belt with more organic form. With this boundary, we can base on to develop. The belt is deformed by the force brought by the entrance from different directions. Four slopes are made to cover the site so people are able to work across. A system of secondary rules help to create more connections. Urban rural and industrial textures are combined in the central park. As you can imagine, it will be a different experience for passengers on the train to transport through the landscape. So this is the overview of the central park. <laughs> we have more rural textures in the south, organic, original railway track in the middle, well, organic, urban in the south, we use a, a continuity of a red belt. In the south, the ground is more soft with rural elements like wetland and farmland. Well, in the north, more hard pavings is created to provide more space for people. That's all. Thanks for listening. Um, the music was a surprise, but uh, uh, next group. Okay, um, just wait a bit. Can you see my screen? Um, sorry, sorry, can you show it? Yes, yes. Oh, show it, okay. Okay, um, I will play the video. So we are group two and this is our video. Uh, enjoy. So the title is Resi Ching Porta Romana, as you can see in this, some of these clips. We begin with the analysis from the macro context. And then we move into the more closer looks. And then this is we try to understand the scale of the sites. So this is the function zoning for the housing and commercial. Create more spaces. And this is subtle increase of age. And this is for a function of the ground floor. And now for the landscape. This is the activity that we imagine happen in the, our design area. Mm. 
This is the space that were created by the separation of each masses. This is more closer looks to the of our buildings. And this is the platform on the top of the trains, which provides some activities. And this is the building itself for the housing. This is some layout of the configuration. And this is how we imagine the view when it's already finished. So this is the defined master plans. And we're close with some statement. And this is our member. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much, group two. You're welcome. So, Thank you so much. I think that we go further with the, the group three. <clears throat> Hello everyone, we are group number three and we are going to talk about the project Greenflow, student housing in complex and the hill park in Milano. As we said, the project is called Greenflow. The name represents the green line and wind corridor ideas that project has defined for a sustainable ecosystem as a result of urban analysis. The city of Milano consists of historical layers formed in historical process. Although each layer is part of a whole, it also has its own characteristics. Therefore, some urban texture differences may occur between layers. Porto Romano is an obvious junction area that should achieve the transition of the urban fabric. The project area is part of a project proposal called the Green Belt, aims to create sustainable and green railways that surround the city. In this context, the ecosystem to be created within the region should be designed to serve also these huge projects. In addition, the region is located between two important infrastructures. A relationship to be established between them will be very beneficial to be sustainable ecosystem in region. And the area is already well connected with the city with urban transportations and bike sharing system. We will create stronger connection with those systems to create healthy environment. Let's start with our urban concept. As we have mentioned before, our main concept is leaving all the area for green and locating our buildings on the north part of the area to face with the urban fabric. The second step, we are remaining the area as wind corridor and also creating openings to our general mass to realize fresh air canyons through area to reduce heat island effect around the site. The third step is to connect the north and south with topographic slopes. Since we are planning to put railway half underground, we can reuse the train excavation soil for our slopes. The fourth step is to arrange the function of building volume according to the surroundings in order to create a convenient and enjoyable environment for social interaction. In the fifth step, we will keep the abandoned railway to use mobile structures as an urban furniture on it for creating multifunctional open spaces in our landscape. And creating a huge landscape area supported by all analysis and strategies made before. Here is a must plan to show the general view of our project and then turn to the landscape part. There are three footprints in landscape strategy. Ecological footprint cultural memory footprint, and habitant footprint. In great corridor growth, depend on the connection design and railway barrier, we propose to have topography slope instead of bridges. We try to have more subconnections and introduce more winds in our sites to create our topography shape and then proceed to form the root system. New green networking is formed. In water corridor growth, based on rich underground water, our site is turned to a sponge collecting green water and the ground ring off. So wetland restoration for rural landscape and water built along the topography are created. A new connection is formed for a bound water system.
In historical memory, Fritz Yard, the water tower, service structure, and railway traces uh, try to be maintained. Service structure is a start point and part of railways are traces for the mobile structure and the DIY workshops. I just could have present memory you this modernization and the Prada foundation buildings we propose to open up the area in front of them for water plaza and the Prada towers plaza future memory for 2013 we will have the Olympic village and sprint here so the sport ground and juggling paths are offered Last, we'd like to invite all to interact with our park, not only athletes, students, families, but also kids' empowerment groups. We provide pedestrian passages to link diverse park systems, preserve site history. We create a topographic connection. Seasonal wetlands can regulate climate, reuse of railway as movable furniture, provide natural experience in the city, Relationship between different elements in industrial areas reflect the ambience that our project aims to provide. After our radical placement decision, main and secondary axes were analyzed. Axes that are cutting from north divided our mass. The courtyards have been placed after to reach human scale and to provide natural light. Axes that cut the building from south defined by separated elements. Their dimensions refers their functions and the importance of the axis. If the axis is not continued, the element is placed directly on the axis rather than next to it. Elements which are public have been extended through park to underline the entrances. Later, additional passages on the ground floor has been placed that if the axis continue, passage leads to park. The relationship with the project and the context try to be kept simple and clean, but intensifying each other as much as possible. Our references has been chosen according to its scale and function. It let us keep our building in primitive form with the Chilcerian approach. We try to keep continuous facade on the street side. Our block is getting higher through Piazza. On the park side, respecting to the relationship with the old train station by keeping the high lower, we define the last separated piece of our block on Piazza as a tower to act as a landmark by referring to the high of Fondazione Prada Tower. As you can see, our two sides are reflecting the urban texture by quantity of the fragments and heights. Now we will see some vedutas from important axes. First one is from the street side where we have a cut in between two blocks. The second one shows how our tower defines the piazza by its orientation. And this one shows the separated buildings located on an axis. And continuous axes are not cutted, contrary highlighted. And finally, from a position where we see our fragmentation looking through park. After cultural center, our main strategy is setting blocks private to public along the Via Sonsa and ending it at Corsa Lodi with tower that work as office building. The Olympic Village is planned as a student housing after the event. An interior organization is created as suitable for both usage. Solution of interior organization is achieved by using grids which provides proper dimensions, location of rooms which oriented to provide privacy, placement of course on the intersections and location of common areas which cover the course. The circulation is touching all the elements that we have mentioned. And also we are repeating the method of general circulation also in common areas. These references affect us to multiple usage of course and using built-in materials. We have two types of rooms that single and double. Earlier, the housing project of Peter Zumthor is used as a reference because it is aimed to achieve warm atmosphere and create comfort circulation inside and outside of rooms. An interior, we inspired from the Le Corbusier project in perspective of using furniture as a division element and create subspace indoor. There is loop circulation between changing room and bathroom parts of single room. In double rooms, it is provided equal space quality to both users. The bathroom extension of the rooms are creating more dynamic corridor and defining the entrance of the rooms. And finally, we have co-working and studying building, which is separated from the mess. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, group three. Then I would say group four. 
Good morning, everyone. Binario Kilometer 1.24 is the European generation we proposed for Milano Porta Romana Railyard in view of the Olympic Games. The first phase of the research focuses on understanding the context and find elements that could lead us to finding a urban strategy. Together with it, we concentrate in understanding the existing area, because usually we think about the dismissed railyard as empty space inside the urban fabric, but actually is not. Porta Romana Railyard is still full of infrastructural objects that strongly characterize it, as the um, old um, water tank or the electrical pole over the railway lines and this concrete platform. From this first consideration and to respond to the aim of reconnect different parts of the city, we take the suggestion of the living bridge from Aurelio Galfetti, Project Bagni di Bellinzona, uh, where a continuous element is crossing an area. But due to the existing rail yard and the buildings, this rigid system undergoes some shifting that increases the tension between horizontal direction and vertical. The transversal arms were fundamental for dialoguing with the borders. A consequence of the idea of the bridge is the continuity of an element and the permeability of the ground floor. All the public function will be concentrated inside and under the bridge in order to exploit its structure and have more relationship with the rural park. Only the residential block will be outside the system to be more detached from the railway lines, but still connected thanks to the same bridge. We develop a slender skeleton that softly is touching the ground and get gradually goes in eight. Here we can see some axonometry that shows the relationship that both the bridge and the buildings has with the parks and the surrounding, and also between themselves. The park was a focal point for its rural character. To be very specific and reflect also in the natural environment, the atmosphere of the city, which was plants and greenery that already grows in the area, providing the necessary space to grow in a more rural area in between, while on the border the park is better defined also to be at the service of, of all the citizens. Each of these natural environments has a specific atmosphere that forms the space. We have to find some cabins uh, in front of Fondazione Prada. That can host students or a workshop. We have to find a zone uh, for the market and the um, urban orchard. <laughs> Another one is the botanic garden. This other one is the wild zone in the middle of the park. And this last one are the playground in the um, uh, bottom part of the area. The typology we adopted for the residential part of the system are two longitudinal low blocks, face higher and squarish tower. The first is reflecting the horizontality of the bridge, while the second take advantage of the void below to develop in height. The organization of the spaces, especially for the Q building, um, derived from the repetition of the same modules. The apartments are organized following a grid 3 per 9 meter, as in Casa dell'Accademia in Mendrisio by Carola Barchi, Haken Konz, and Ludovica Molo. 
that we took as reference. It is the minimum dimension that allowed us to provide in the same block private and shared spaces for students. The tower footprint as well is as tiny as possible. In fact, it was just three apartments per floor. Besides, due to the simple structure, the space presents with a high level of flexibility, offering different opportunities for future development and configuration of the apartment. Both building and bridge present very slender section, and they are in constant communication with the outside park. Moreover, the juxtaposition of punctual high elements and longitudinal one is emphasizing the dichotomy and the tension of the system that we also find in the general composition of the plan. These are some view of the low block and the bridge. And this one of the tower when we can appreciate the relationship with the building and with outside. To conclude, everything is trying to undergo the same principle and decline the same concept of awareness. Be aware of the condition in which we were operating and try to be respectful and exploiting all the possibilities given by the plot, reducing the impact as much as possible. Thank you so much for your attention. And uh, thank you very much for your presentation. So I think, uh, um, so as you can see, it are four very different uh, concepts. And um, I have to say just a conclusion that uh, uh, I was a little bit skeptical at the beginning because I thought that so, so, uh, kind of this kind of experience with the in working in a very complex area for five days, with a student that doesn't know it, uh, didn't know each other, and uh, I didn't know the students uh, working and living in different uh, places of the world. Um, I thought I, I was very, really skeptical, but uh, I think that uh, they did a lot in uh, these five uh, uh, in these five days. It was actually very funny to, to work with. So we had a lot of, uh, we, we worked very well together and I, I was really happy to, uh, every morning to work with you. So it was really a nice work atmosphere and it was a, a quite a surprise. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Donatella. Thanks a lot. And uh, now we are moving to Spain. <laughs> Jose Maria Sanchez. Are you there? Yes, yeah. of course. Okay, thank you very much, um, Camilo. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Politecnico de Milano. I think this is a wonderful uh, uh, way of teaching architecture. I believe very much in workshop. I think it's a very exciting uh, way of uh, have this intense period and talking about, uh, uh, well, in this case about a project, but talking about architecture through, through, uh, through a short, in, in a short time. So thank you also to Professor Esa uh, Ilaria Valente for the invitation. Thank you to Professor Massimo Ferrari for his input during the workshop. Of course, thank you to you, Camilo, Julian, and Lisa. But thank you also, and for me this is very important to say, to Donatella, Roberto Hervé and Sebastián. Of course, it has been a pity because when I received the invitation, even I know some of you, and I mean, I, and I admire so much the work of some other of you. Uh, and for me, it was a, a beautiful uh, uh, opportunity to, to share time. We haven't that, we didn't share that time, but somehow uh, through your presentation, through your comments, some, I mean, we also analyzed your work during our workshop. So they have, it has been very inspiring for us, no? And finally, of course, I want to thank Renato and Pedro, and all students, to share time and spend all together this uh, special week. I don't have too much to say. I just will uh, explain that I believe architecture, and um, maybe life, is also is a question of order. No? So we started from this point. No? Which kind of order have already existed there in Porta Romana? And let's say 
which kind of lines of order still have a, a, a value or still is there, and which is the new order we should implement to activate again, to reload uh, this uh, uh, complex territory. Uh, we applied a very easy methodology. We, start, we open a very uh, long conversation with the student. We open a dialogue and a critical conversation, discussion through a small groups before, afterwards, those conversations become uh, a, a bigger conversation with the rest of the groups. They appear synergies, it appears. So somehow what we are gonna show you now is not a result, it's a conversation. So we will try to follow with our conversation in front of you in the way that uh, we are opening some questions, we are uh, making uh, some, uh, let's say, um, uh, well, we, we, are, we, are, we are some, some, we are giving some opinion and, and we are somehow, let's say that uh, 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 giving uh, an answer, a very open answer to a, a possibility, I'm um, 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 looking for possibilities uh, to, to reload and to uh, bring the life, again, bring the life through the order to, to this uh, uh, complex territory. Okay, so maybe uh, Renato, can you share your yes. screen, please? I will share now. So, please. Yeah. Can you put it in? Yes. Okay. Great. Infrastructural condition, this was the name, so we start our conversation. Okay, so in this image, we can see some of the examples and reference that refer to architectural topics or architectural themes that we propose uh, to the student at the beginning of the week, that uh, these uh, architectural themes are uh, the, uh, the infrastructure as architecture, the, um, the connection between the um, uh, as we can see in this, in this image, the connection between the compact city and the uh, core, and the core uh, right? Uh, and also we propose some uh, other topics uh, closer to Milan as uh, the experience with Milan typologies or the huge scale that we can see with Torantolini, uh, so the huge scale for scale. Uh, we hope that we can, it can be clear with the next examples. This collage helps us to understand that the area is characterized by a big void in contrast with the urban fabric and buildings and to understand the materiality of the surrounding street uh, of Scalo Porta Romana. This uh, the relationship between void, voids and boundaries uh, was the focal point of our uh, concept and the strategy. We decided to put a circular volume in the center and try to give a new identity to the site by using the different texture and elements, create a new phenomenon and a perception inside and outside of the circle. We wanted to concentrate on uh, the idea of a two level concept. Um, and uh, we wanted to focus on the perception of space, uh, creating a sort of uh, connection between uh, the two levels, but also between the buildings and the paths and uh, green corridors that we created following the lines already created by the regular line. In this slide, we can see the concept uh, that suggests how a perforated basement uh, can work as a landmark and connector in between a fragmented city. From our manifesto, we aim to express the strategy from our proposal, stressing the main connection and distribution in horizontal bands across the plot trying to create different densities and programming according to affinities and relations to the context.
Our project wants to reconnect the city of Milan by creating an area which dialogues with the presence. Through this diagram, we want to show the actual genuine nature of the scalo, which uh, currently is, not, is only perceived as an obstacle in the city to overcome. Our analysis consisted in the operation of observing the different uses, movements and narratives, recognizing the potentialities of the context, trying to find the possible relations and coordinating them in the plot, leading to the generation of an inner system program. Um, the project aims to define a new part of the city through the idea of building density and porosity. So in this sense, uh, the north border facing the compact city is interpreted as a long urban block that finds its level of density and porosity, establishing a relationship with the pre-existing buildings, while the south border facing the informal city finds its rule in a series of isolated objects that interact at the scale of the landscape. The existing organization of the city suggests the division of the project area in four different zones. Each one of them has uh, its own theme taken from the existing buildings in the boundaries and tries to dialogue and work with it. While we assume the site of three stages development, park, Olympic Village and mixed use block with a lifestyle of art, wellness and recreation. They are also the theme of not stations in the intersections. The road follows the logic of city access and those connect east and west appears curved to remind the memory of railway. From north to south the village architectural form becomes scattered to invite Green Park to the living area. The city will be connected by a system of two layers, one that continues the height of the city by some underground tunnels and a system of hypogeum squares. The other one is an upper green lever on which buildings take place. Here, we see that this project aims to stitch this void through an extensive public space connecting north and south and still respecting the train line by using elevated elements that work as wide walkways and squares for recreational purposes. From this view, we can see the red sky street consists of the corridor and platform. They not only connect the buildings on our site, but also inter other interesting places outside the place, like an extent of city street. 
so as to regenerate the railway yard, reconnect to Milano city, and create a lively place for citizens, for athletes, especially for young people. Our intervention consists of three contrasting zones with different functions and unique atmospheres, a residential area on the east, a natural park in the center, and a place for a cultural fair on the west. They are all connected with a pedestrian and cycling bridge that connects and unifies this drastically opposing reality positioned within one site. As you can see in the extra metric, we try to redefine the enclosure of the site with the building and with different multifunctional and keep the permeability by the longitudinal pathway and the vertical connection to connect the north and to the south. And the symbolic circle in the center give a new identity to the site and make a new spatial phenomenon and Mm, space uh, filming for the neighborhoods. As you can see here, this let us better understand how the two-level concept works. Uh, we wanted also to, uh, in some way, give importance to the direction given already by the railway line on the ground floor and using the second level uh, or the upper level to create a contrast and in some sort of way a connection also to the south and, uh, and north. The image shows how this gradient density and porosity aims to connect two parts of the city that are today very distant and diverse. The shorter dimension of the rail of the rail yard is identified as a crossing, connecting the compact city through the two borders of the rail yard and arriving to the south border that defines the informal city. On the other hand, the long dimension of the area is more linked to the idea of the landscape and to a lower movement partner, pattern uh, related more to leisure that traditionally characterize natural urban areas. So as you can see, the shape of these platforms in this project um, the platforms itself represents the figure of the stitches merging two sides of the same element, eliminating the emptiness of this area, this void. So the identity is very clear and transmits the flow of the movements of the city across this area without filling any boundaries. The perspective enclosed by the area is revealed by the evolution to move against the status of fragmentation, pursuing relations through the act of suing connection connections and denouncing affinities. Uh, the view depicts per perspective from two main gateways framing the significant moments of the project. Our proposal aims to meet and accomplish all functional and programmatic requirements of the project, but more importantly, 
It focuses on relinking the gap and on using the empty space to manifest cultural and ecological solutions, hence transforming a revoked site to a revolutionary landmark in Milan. And finally, this structure not only works as a connector to the different layers within the site, but it also relinks a gap in the city's urban fabric. This constitutes a perfect metaphor for Milano's post-industrial nature, but it also projects to its sustainable, ecological and culturally rich future. Well, uh, um, I try to conclude this presentation uh, on uh, this uh, wonderful drawing. And uh, I have to say that we mm, tried to be radical on uh, each of our proposals. And uh, the work done along this week for me is, uh, is satisfying that they work hard. And uh, I think we, we could see this. I am um, mm, also happy that we have tried to uh, comprehend and clarify some of the signs of the city of Milano, uh, not only in a physical way, let's say, but uh, in a cultural one. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you very much. Bravo. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, well, uh, let's follow. Thanks. Thanks and many compliments for your wonderful drawings. And uh, let's move to the last uh, atelier, Sebastian. Are you there? Hi. Hi. Hi to everybody. Uh, so I will share the screen now. Um, can you see it from the computer screen? Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly. Perfect. Okay, well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the tutors, Ricardo Rabarini and Vichy Getty, for, for the support during these entire days. I think they, they, they have been very important for the, well, for the achievements and also the students for the hard work. I have to say they had a, good, a very good time, uh, even though I had to, to wake up very early every morning, but it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure doing this workshop. So I organized this presentation. Uh, first, uh, a brief introduction. I want to share also the methodology and the process. Then you will see uh, the manifestos of each group and then uh, nine, two minutes video. So I hope we take the, the, the time they are supposed to, to use. Well, I like this image from the very beginning when I saw it, that was part of the material that we, we were given. Um, because, I mean, it highlights very, uh, very well, the, let's say, the main problem. Of course, there are hundreds of problem, things to solve, but I, I would say that is the main, the main problem. And, it's, and, it, and explains, I think, what is very important is the idea that the limit, also the, the, the limit is not the line, let's say, the, 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 but the territory. And this means many things, no? how to sue. That that limit where is where are we going to work is just the let's say the the limit of the legal site or it is further that that is place and I think the the projects deal with this first let's say um, this question no and in terms of the methodology it, I mean it's, of course I think we we probably all of all, all the, all the professors agree that any, let's say, urban project, architectonic project must uh, acknowledge the, let's say, the cultural context, the taste uh, changes and so on. And, and of course, since I'm the last one, uh, I can easily see some uh, coincidence uh, among all of the tutors. So of course, some of them is, is the need for creating coexistence, no? So, I mean, coexistence in every term, 
even to, I mean, to finish the old dichotomy, uh, nature, city, humans, non-humans, and also and it's important because ask us to learn from new insights in relation with the idea of wilderness and what is supposed in terms of what humans can learn from there, uh, things like cooperation, you know, uh, and the coexistence to, let's say, to put in consideration all uh, um, coincidence in the idea of zoning. I th let's say that that, that students are, are asked to challenge that idea of zoning as a process of organizing things, uh, because, of course, zoning reduces the possibility of coexistence, no? Uh, important in terms of the of this vision, no, this idea that I think is every time becoming much more important, changing taste, uh, decision making, and so on. That has to do with reducing human human footprints, and for us it meant to work with a healthy building system that can be easily dismantled, easily built. And for that purpose, we propose the students to work with a modular construction. Um, also, the idea of creating some sort of autonomy that doesn't mean to create ghettos, but also, I mean, reduce mobility. I think is one of the one of aims of every city proposal nowadays. Every, very important is the idea of equality and how to avoid or how we architects and the city, the design of the city can help to create more equality, uh, mixing social classes, ages. Um, and this also posed the question of how to govern uh, common spaces, no? And the other important issue that has arisen uh, recently is the idea of telecommuting is something that uh, will not disappear. And the consequence of this digital area, of course, is isolation, mental problems associated with that. And I think we as an architect in charge of the city can do things in order to promote uh, casual encounters, social infrastructure, social interaction, and so on. So that has to do with the means that, uh, sorry, with the, with the vision. And I, uh, I propose the students to work with, let's say, some uh, diagrams of organization, organizational diagram with five of them uh, that, of course, are, are present everywhere in nature and also in built things. Not, no, for sure that we have seen several projects already uh, working with knots because they, 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 of course, they are associated mostly to the idea of, of crossing, no, crossing different modes of transportation like bicycles and so on. So knots works very well for that. Uh, I also propose them to work with com schemes, no, uh, linear schemes. Uh, branch schemes and not schemes. So you will see projects uh, 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 working with, with that organizational systems. And as I said already, I propose then also to work with, with, uh, with prefab system and also with grids, no? Uh, in the understanding that this allows, allows for, let's say, as I said before, reducing footprints of construction, even allows for flexibility. Uh, and so on. And also it's important to highlight, and I think, I think something that we, the four professors have in common, is the knowledge that buildings are important. And so the, and the let's say, uh, paraphrasing Donatella's lecture, cities are done not with ideas, but with buildings, no? So buildings, I think all of us has uh, that uh, coincidence, no? So the, the first, uh, I, I work with some triggering exercise, working with things at hand, uh, trying to discover design in, in accidents. Right? Yeah. Sorry. So the idea behind those exercises is to think by doing and, and through accident discover uh, opportunities and and so on. So the first act is to do uh, this model with things at hand and then do the drawing, let's say the translation, very precisely of that initial drawing. And they, they had to take the, um, the picture in the way of uh, Hogni. Therefore, this fragmentation produces unexpected things that can further take in uh, if they read it uh, adequately into the project. 
Or this one, for instance, that work with the, the idea of an iceberg, and finally we'll build a project that they will show in the video that way. Same for this one. The model originally was not fragmented, as you are seeing the picture. That's the result of doing the picture in, uh, in the way of David Hogney. And of course, it's open up uh, uh, opportunity for design, etc. Uh, and the second triggering exercise has to do with uh, ways of uh, creating coexistence. So I asked them to use uh, object taken from SketchUp software, uh, SketchUp library, and place it together and think and see what can happen. What the I mean, how what kind of discussion the, this uh, intersection open in terms of create social infrastructure or mixed uses. So. On the right hand side, for instance, very interesting is the is a, is a let's say combine, combination hybrid of a cemetery for, by Aldo Rossi and a housing complex. No, and this will give birth to a project that we'll show you later. And the other thing that was very important is concerned with the Olympic Games itself, and is the idea that the Olympic Games, I mean, for very long were associated with a sort of heroic temperament and many innovations uh, uh, were done uh, according to that. I think that's something that probably has been missed. Uh, we are not in a very optimistic games, uh, sorry, optimistic times, but I think Olympic Games are an opportunity for, let's say, uh, for new beginnings in a way, to thinking things in a different way. And I think we, uh, all the, 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 the project that we saw before of the other teams, I think they have this, this idea as well. And also this, I mean, this image uh, uh, presents also the, the, let's say, the, the Olympic infrastructure also as an opportunity to create new social infrastructure, infrastructure. So you will see some projects that take that in consideration. Well, I will show you briefly the, the manifesto of each group and then we pass quickly to the video. So this is one of those projects that take acknowledge the presence of the infrastructure, um, the sport infrastructure, this also as well, uh, creating a, a, a scheme practice, you know, for the, I mean, many of the, the infrastructure for the Winter Games are artificial, they're artificial constructions um, that uses uh, even concrete, grid, and so on, and they also are built, uh, 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 infrastructure for practicing, no? They jump into the swimming pools and so on, uh, and it's, it's very interesting. So how this can birth to, to a project, uh, in this case of the student. This one uh, acknowledged the idea that the limit of the site is not the legal limit, but extend further uh, further the, li the legal limit of the site, and they propose mega, mega building as a way of reducing let's say, the, the amount of, of construction in the park. So they, they propose this uh, sort of system of, of rocks, uh, pieces of landscape rather than buildings. Or this one that is very interesting because I acknowledge the idea how to deal with the park. So they propose a uh, park understood as a ortus conclusus, uh, having a duality of, a, let's say, a cemetery park and a living, uh, living park and creating mix of infrastructure as a way also in these pandemic times of celebrating life. Or oh, this one is a linear building uh, that they propose therefore to, to, to make the, the rail in a promenade, but on the other hand to solve the crossing of that new limit, if you want, using uh, making nodes and branches that are buildings in itself. They are not just paths, but are building, let's say, uh, in this case, social infrastructure that uh, allows for the crossing of the of the rail yard. This one is very interesting too because they propose a, a, a park without nature, let's say a, 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 an ecology uh, without nature. Paraphrasing that that book of, of Timothy Morton that probably you know. Um, this one as well, that is a system of, of rings uh, with linear building that follow a different pattern, not the pattern of the park, or, or and this one that moves the ground uh, in order to create the passing and, 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 and acknowledging that the earth that needs to move 
uh, it needs to be that needs to come from some somewhere. So the same movement of Earth is taken from the side that create this void. So there's a relation of voids and and infills uh, and where the supporting uh, walls become programs. And this project is quite interesting because uh, it propose a question. Uh, certain naivety in relation with parks, in terms that parks are always good, but they are not always that good. Maybe the parks can become dangerous. Um, so they, they pose the, the question of what, what can be the relation between buildings and parks. In this case, there are buildings that belong, let's say, to the order of the city that get into the park and take, take control, govern, care some areas of that park. No? And after there is this six up building to create the connectivity. But I think the most important feature here is how uh, buildings uh, govern some common areas. Well, and now show you the videos. Seeing the area in Porta Romana, a great empty space in the middle of a well consolidated urban fabric, we operated on different levels in order to give back to the city this forgotten but extremely precious area. Firstly, we worked on the identification of the site by creating a continuous line which helped us to find a clear and sharp border. Secondly, we reasoned about the importance of relinking Porta Romana railway yard with the existing urban fabric. For this reason, many other lines have been traced to connect the upper part of the area to the lower in an effort to re -sew this laceration. Lastly, it was essential to solve the issue of the connections inside the site in order to create a more local, intimate environment, those knots, not casually created with a wool thread, represent this idea. In translating our concept to the actual design, linear buildings are placed on the border of the area, creating that barrier effect ultimately broken by paths derived from the alignment with the consolidated urban fabric. These which main functions will be residences and common spaces for athletes to relax, are designed following a modular grid majorly enhanced by the use of containers. Ace circular buildings, reminiscing the ancient and contemporary arenas used for the Olympic Games, constitute the core of the project by creating a system of built structures and passageways for pedestrian and cyclists. Hosting the main ice rinks for the Olympic Games, with their rounded shapes, they break the rigidity of the modular grid, creating a new landmark for Porta Romana. The space thus created in such a vibrant area, packed with educational, recreational, and leisure facilities, will contribute to the regeneration of this abandoned site, adding services and accommodations to make this district even more livable. The proposal we developed for the Olympics 2026 Milano Cortina in the area of Porto Romano in Milano comes from the idea that this area, now frozen in the city, can be seen as a large iceberg that has frozen the project area, penetrating into the context as a large solid block that is grafted into the territory as represented in the continuous monument by Superstudio. So, the idea originates from a compact block of ice that gradually crumbles creating water courses that reshape the solid element and branch out into the territory. The path this becomes a real ski of a soul, where thanks to the different slopes, it is possible to play different sports, both winter and summer. Different sports have been analyzed and introduced in the proposal, such as skiing and snowboarding, speed skiing, freestyle skiing, and ski jumping, which have allowed to reshape the element of the ski way. The void resulting from this process it is composed of different cubes of ice that flake, roll, this creating the interior spaces of the complex, the valleys. These valleys are marked by a structural grid that acts not only as a real framework of the complex, but also as an element of continuity between the functions it will host. On the ground floor, this purpose structure remains permeable to the individual this allowing the connection with the urban context. While the upper levels are composed, depending on the needs, by the extension of motor elements that make it livable, 
as for example the common areas as place of sociability and integration to residences as a domestic space and finally the commercial spaces the idea comes from the possibility of being able to aggregate modular elements, thus increasing, according to the needs, the volume of liable spaces. The prefabricated elements, thus, allowing greater flexibility and the use of space, assuming so different conformation depending on what are the needs of the moment. The iceberg will become a symbol of this area, even after the Winter Olympic Games, and will be completely integrated in the urban raising the landscape of Milano. Sorry. The design proposal regarding the reuse of the Porta Romana rail yard has been developed focusing on the fact that the site is currently a neglected urban void, a frontier which has eventually defined its own territory inside the urban fabric. The project initially focuses on the activity of sewing through the utilization of existing voids in the area by interconnecting them with architectural objects. The proposal stresses upon the idea of finding the real borders of the site by penetrating the threshold of the legal site. Following the initial diagram, the representation of the architectural objects have been translated from the form of archaic stones. The landscape layer mainly stresses the concept of developing new connections in the ground floor that have the aim of creating relations between urban corridors and the centralities inside the context itself. The stones while being the main element which produce new voids through the enclosure they create, offer a different level of publicness inside the perimeter of the building. Technological aspects regarding the assembly of the buildings have been programmed to develop under a modular structure, which is established by a steel grid and modular units. Depending on the necessary density, those modules can be further produced, removed or used accordingly regarding the different functional needs. The proposed buildings define various public spaces that open up towards the inner court by the penetration of different transportation access over the volume, such as the streets and the pedestrian pathways. The project site is in Porta Romana, where the problem of disconnection between the north and south should be solved by suing the rail yard area dividing the two sides. We use this opportunity to play with the concept of dichotomy by placing contrasting ideas to bring new dynamic spaces for the city of Milano. The idea of dualism was experimented by making a photomontage of Aldo Rossi and Ragieri San Cataldo Cemetery and Moshe Safdi Habitat 67. It's interesting to explore this concept of death being the nature of life and reality. It is something that connects us as humans. Meanwhile, it is also very unspoken in our society. Since we are facing rare times due to this pandemic emergency, it seemed like an opportunity to highlight the celebration of life in all the stages. All of this dialectic could be embraced by a monumental building. Therefore, we went for a bold confrontation. Overall, the proposal is highlighting the ideology behind the concept of a cemetery, hosting death and social housing in coexisting. We gave a modern approach for the concept of the Ortus Conclusus, and this happened by the translation of the painting of Casimir Malevich, the suprematist painter. This image has two polar sides, one defined by a constellation of lines and the other for a constellation of surfaces, which applied for our our idea of contrasting gardens. We wanted to provide for this monumental building the right space to stand. Therefore, we designed the exterior to be open, free and welcoming to this dramatic void created by these two different Ortus Conclusus. The west side is for silent and introspection and east side is dynamic and alive. The cemetery is designed in the guidance of these lines turning into trenches and vertical elements, where we explore the changing levels that allows us to respect the silence of the area. 
On the other hand, for the wild garden, the surfaces extracted from the painting created the patios and are adapted for cultivation, fruit trees and some animals to represent the idea of fertility and life. The first step was site analysis, during which the existing potentials and issues, including the surrounding roads, pedestrian paths, the two bridges that the train passes below, the dominant buildings which will continue to exist within the site, and all those that will be eliminated were identified. The main idea started from choosing the branches kind of diagram in combination with the knots to create a sort of integration and string between the site and its surrounding, from north to south and east to west. The design process goes on by choosing the train track as the main body from which the branches and knots initiate from, making one whole volume that holds all the functions. Once the composition was placed on the site, Logo pieces were used to create a model that allowed us to adjust the volume to correspond with the invented concept. In order to isolate the noise pollution caused by the train, the main volume was placed on top of the train tracks. This volume works as a podium which separates the site into two sections while connecting the branches and knots to work together as a system. The circulation from one side to the other is provided by the inclined roots of the branches, starting from the ground floor going up to the top of the podium, which is actually an extension from the green area and continues through the inclined roots of the knots and finally reaches the other side. The green belt within the volume that connects the east side to the west is located below the residential models. In order to create a topography, some small hills were created that in some cases are also used as structures. Hello everyone, we are group 6 from section C of the workshop. Referring to the situation of Porta Romana Rilliard, our project is inspired by the knots and the streamlines to create more interaction spots and decrease the influence to the ground floor. We try to intersect realist models like C-shaped buildings, pathways and modular houses to develop our idea. We inserted our hybrid into the site across the rail yard to connect the north and the south. In the overview, we can see clearly the division of three elevations, which are connected among them in different levels. Moreover, the relation with the neighborhood is strengthened by the same kind of solution. We try to show our respect for the existing buildings by leaving a plaza between Fondazione Prada and the cultural heritage that we deserve. We plan to create a circulation which could serve for pedestrian and cyclists in the air to enhance the relation between the open space and buildings. We were inspired by the microchip, so we integrate the pattern of the ship logically into the project, and interesting open spaces merge out. The prefabricated structure is composed by cubes and it is reinforced by the inclinator's path and diagonal lines. We can notice again the relation in terms of the height among buildings. The public space always tries to be an active playground for all, no matter when. And this is a possible view on the pathway in which we can nearly see all of the elements of the project. The outdoor misting system is planted to place on the air pathway to lower the temperature and absorb the dust in the hot weather. And with this detail, we conclude our presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Unique event that will be held in Milan in 2026 can be a great opportunity to give a new life to such an important but forgotten site as Porto Romano Railways. We chose a branch system for the first assumption. We started our investigation with a draft composition taking into account the existing condition of the site. The core points and main axes were selected to assume the surface of Porto Romano. Let's have a look to the first option. We'll start with the master plan. Outside points are located according to the core point selected, merging city into the new landscape. Inside voids create inner squares underlined by rings of canopy, which connect the linear buildings with different layers of territory. All rings play the role of transition hubs between the layers in the city. Green zones around the site have a continuation on the landscape of the territory. Let's have a look at the layers. The upper loop is the connection path for sport activities such as jogging, cycling, and skating. The green path goes next with the recreational zones. Public services such as ticket offices are placed in small pavilions. Linear residential buildings with public functions on the lower levels are attached to the rings of the connection path. Greenery and pavement are integrated into historical railways. Now, let's have a zoom on residential buildings. The arrangement was guided by the city structure. Continuing the narrative about the river and transportation function of the site, we took inspiration from the cargo ships and railways. So, the metal structure grid is filled with containers. The functional organization we moved from cargo ships to cruise ones. Each linear building is autonomous with both public and residential facilities. To the grid structure, public facilities are more flexible and spacious, while residential units have high density. The roof is accessible for recreational purposes. Here we can see the organization of the offices and residential units and organization of cafe and bookstore as an example. This is second options from the links, which will take off of the relationship between the site and the surrounding, maintaining the idea how to seal the gap at the area. The site currently assists as a point in the urban area. The main urban assets create important distribution to the site. We try to connect them by a new platform above the railway system. And put buildings on the top. The new platform creates another level for city landscape. At the same time, its canopy serves space for public use under it, so people can use public space in any kind of weather condition. This is the main function program, the content function for hotel, office, residential building, and services. This is main wing as residential building with flexible modular system and a rooftop garden and practicing area for athletes. This is planned as session. You can see here the wing could be opened or closed. The wing with the void defined limit and the wing as symbols. Walking through the area, we could realize constant changes of space, of labor, and activities. People could do exercise anytime, anywhere in an Olympic village. And this is the last one. The intervention began with a formal exercise of superimposition of common objects. The organicity of the pretzels and the pasta as beacons of intensity connected by western lines. It is this how zigzagging the parks came to be, the organic contrasting the rigidness of the city and bleeding through to the site, becoming the scenario for placemaking. Immediately, the beacons of function appear defined by the organic landscape they look over and the straight axis of the street, establishing a relation and transition between the city and the parks. Each of these constructions looks over a portion of the land, ensuring ownership and the well-being of said park. Suing them comes the relentless zigzag, a connection mechanism that cuts through the site and disappears into the solids. The landscape portions the zigzag and each element becomes part of an individual park. The zigzag, in return, detects the choice of the botanic life to promote connection with the public buildings and ensure all year comfort. Trees are planted in such a way that, as winter comes, the sun warms up the living units. The zigzag 
frees up nature by encapsulating domesticity. The flexible eight by eight grid allows for the additive inclusion of modular units that can be prefabricated and arranged to create infinite interior private and public configurations. Dynamic ramps are located at the corners of the zigzag as vertical connections, allowing the first and third stories to house vehicles. The interior of this building becomes a new street, a new home, while still maintaining a strong relationship with the ever-changing landscape. The organic and the man-made, determining each other and defining marked and different spaces that feel individual yet open to everyone. This is zigzagging parks. Well, that's it. Thank, thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, thanks again to the tutors and, and all the students for the hard work they have done. Thanks, Sebastian. Thanks a lot, really. Thanks to everybody. I, before to to ask to our guest, uh, uh, oh, please, uh, I ask to to the visiting professor if are so kind to switch on the screen so we can stay together. Thanks. And uh, incredible, the thing that you have done. I would like only to, uh, to underline two points, three points, very short three points. Um, for me, it has been the first time that I coordinate MEOW. And uh, when uh, three, four, one month ago with our dean and uh, with Domenico Kitsoniti, we decided to shift this workshop in the remote mode uh, I was quite worried, <laughs> to be honest. And uh, I think that the result that we have seen today, better than hundreds and hundreds of words, uh, explain very well how to transform a, restrict, a restriction in an opportunity. And uh, this is, I think, the, the stronger thing that uh, we, we have to conserve also for the future. The second point that I would like to underline is also the talking about the topic, the relationship for me, the relationship between the didactic programs and uh, the research program. Here we have an incredible, um, some incredible topics that uh, you have uh, presented through academic exercise that can be the start, a starting point also for the research program that we can grow up in our uh, polytechnic. And this top, this point is directly connected to the last consideration that I would like to share with you, is the role of uh, our university in to the, uh, the city. And I think that uh, for the polytechnic to talk about uh, uh, Porta Romana rail yard in this moment is very important because through a critic, through some consideration, starting from the students, starting from the research, we can play a crucial role in the city development. So and I think that an experience as the Miao, as this workshop, is an incredible tool to promote this debate, to promote this reflection on the city. So I would like to invite, uh, of course, our Dean, and also the, uh, the teaching staff, if they want to share some common. And first to open the microphone, I would like to, um, to thank all the organization team that work with me. And it has been a real honor to work with them. And let me uh, replay the name of all of them, Professor Eugenio Bell uh, Bellini, Francesco Belloni, Domenico Kizzonita, and Lucia Derchia. Nicole De Togni, Corinna Del Bianco, Massimo Ferrari, Elena Fioret, Fioretto, Elena Fontanella, eh, Nora Lombardini, Elvio eh, Manganaro, eh, Martino Mocchi, Super Giulia Setti e Claudia Tinazzi. Thanks a lot to all the team for the support. So I invite our guest and uh, all the professor if they want to share some uh, reflection, please switch on directly the microphone. May I say something? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Ilaria. 
Thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks. Thanks to the students and to all of you. Because um, uh, it, uh, the work of Miao this year is very, very uh, interesting, I think. Um, I want to say that I, I worked for one academic year on the field of Porta Romana. Uh, and so I, I have an idea about uh, how is difficult this, uh, this field. Uh, but in general, I think that we, uh, we have some topics that are uh, important at another level, at the level of uh, uh, which could be the, our goal in uh, architectural and urban design uh, nowadays. Uh, so, because from from the drawings uh, by our students, I see uh, different uh, approaches, this different possible approaches that are all on our table. And I want to start from uh, from a topic. On on one hand, we have an approach that try to, in a certain sense, to tame this area as a part of the of the, of the fabric of uh, of the city and discuss about which kind of new urban fabric could be uh, in a diverse balancing of open and built up spaces and merging different functions and so creating a, a new public space on the other hand and maybe it's the last um, uh, is the last group by Sebastian Irazaval that uh, uh, point out the, the topic that uh, Olympic Games celebrate the heroic. Uh, and so if it's possible to, to in this type of occasion, um, be more disruptive with uh, promoting uh, um, public space, new public space visions. Uh, for the future. So it's, it's a complicated balancing in, in, uh, uh, to, to define. Uh, uh, and so uh, I think that we, we saw also a different way to approach this area. One topic is the, uh, uh, to, to, put, uh, to give relevance to the unity or to um, work with uh, uh, fragmentation of, of the of the parts, and so how to interpret it, the scale of the city in this situation, uh, and this is something of interesting for Milan because in fact the 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 dimension of the area is about one of our historical park at the Parco Sempione is is uh, maybe is is a little more is a little bigger than Parco Sempione, but is is a the, the scale is about this one, uh, and there is the problem of the infrastructure. And so I, I saw two projects that are uh, uh, the opposite uh, in the certain sense. The one of the Hervé Dubois group, which is a linear central line, and one of the one, but I, I give some quotation because it's not so easy to resume all the ideas that are in uh, this uh, uh, in this workshop, the one that was uh, uh, talking about space in space, uh, the first group by Donatella Fioretti that tried to define a present and working of a, as a big inner space. Those are two ways. And on the other hand, the uh, work by Roberto Cavallo, which is more defined in uh, putting together uh, different islands of the space and, and so uh, create a sort of a, a mosaic of, of, uh, in, in this area. Uh, so uh, I think that the ideas are, are a lot, uh, are a lot and are all interesting, but the problem here is really trying to find a way to interpret the scale and also to find a way of clarify the ideas about which type of shape could have the nature in the city. And so the open space and the public space in our future city. So just some small notes. Thank you. Thank you very much to, to all of you.
Thanks, Ilaria. Thanks. Does somebody else want to um, share? Nora? Yes, if I can. Yeah, sure. First of all, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much to all the professors. It was a very great opportunity for the students, of course, for us also for uh, our young collaborators. So I am teaching restorations. I am not an architectural designer as a teacher, but I would like to ask you, because I had the opportunity following the presentation by the students, uh, that several signs, marks of this uh, portion of uh, territory of Milan, more or less uh, were respected, not I am not speaking, of course, about restoration, but I speak about the memory. So the importance of this science uh, in order to remember the meaning, the historical meaning uh, of this land. So what I would like to ask in general, what is in which way the architectural project can transfer to the future the history, all the history of uh, a part of the city, as uh, this part of the city of Milan, because the history of this, uh, of Porta Romana, is a part of the history of Milan. So, in which way it is possible with the project, a new project, a new architectural project, is possible to transfer to the future also the, 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 the history of, uh, of, uh, the, of this part of the city. Thank you. Thanks, Nora. Thanks a lot. It's an incredibly difficult question. Yes, I don't I, know if, yes. if yeah, but I, I will try to answer. Yeah, Jose. I, if, uh, if I manage, you know, from <clears throat> our point of view, uh, we really think it's important to, to do, first of all, to do a very critical analysis, a critical analysis that will allow us to understand uh, which are the real uh, order, the persistent lines, the persistent traces, how the city was uh, and the life of, those, of that territory was going, not only from the last period of the history, but even from before. So I think through reading, through understanding that, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, lost orders that they were there, those lost actions that was going on, not only so much the, the of course, the, 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 the buildings, the construction or the, or the structure of the city, but the order, the life that was going on. I think after that uh, kind of critical analysis, we can understand uh, different layers and we can answer with new layers that will reload and will uh, give a new opportunity to territory. At least that's the way uh, we have been talking about in our uh, long conversation during this week. And that was more or less the common ground and the common points we were sharing in the different groups, and, well, you know, different, uh, let's say, the proposals. Mm -hmm. I Maybe I can add something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No, in the same direction of, of Jose Maria, uh, uh, probably because I come from a, from a, a I mean, a place with less traditions, no? or, or, more, or, or maybe with the, uh, the tradition plays more in geography, if you want. But from my point of view, I think one of the great values of that site has to do with the geographical scales. That one can think, what are we going to keep of that site? One can say, let's keep the scale. No, that's a value. They say in a in denser cities like Milan to keep to keep that value, that geographical scale. No. Uh, maybe something to to keep, no? I, I, that, that's the, the way to move it into the future, no? And not lose that, no? Because if one, let's say, extend the fabric of the city, you, I mean, we, I mean, can do it better, etc. But at the end, will be more of the same, no? Better design, bad design, etc. But will be more the same. So at least for me, that's the main value of the of the site that's key. Maybe if I may, I would like to add a few words on that. Thanks for the question, uh, Nora, because it's a kind of question that requires many angles. 
that can be seen from many angles. Uh, I agree w with both colleagues, Jose Maria and Sebastian, but there is, I think there is something um, kind of special with railway areas. Um, and uh, I'm telling also from a, a very personal uh, point of view, I've been growing next to a railway as well, myself, uh, in the place where I was born. And there is one peculiarity is that there, um, in the early days, railway areas in our cities were areas where the city, let's say, was turning the back towards the railway. In the, the city that we understand, the city of the blocks, the, 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 the city of the culture, you might even say, uh, up to a certain extent. But those areas were needed for the city in order to propel other activities. So there were people that were engaging with the area and having uh, building up also even a memory and identity with the area because being there, operating there, uh, living there, uh, earning their daily living in the area. So the history and the memory of the city in such an area is getting also mixed. There is a kind of, uh, um, you might call it a controversial uh, issues going on. Some areas that we think uh, they are completely part of the city nowadays, indeed, but they have different and you know, overlapping kind of uh, memories according to the way we look at the city, according to the way we look at the city and the citizens, the people living in the city, the, their stories, their, uh, you know, the, the way they've been experiencing the area. And that's something that also I've been trying to kind of communicate with the students that uh, traces uh, contextual uh, analysis are important also to allow a very, perhaps even thin connections with some very, very local story that is going on. Uh, perhaps it's good to transmit to to keep also for the future, but it's inevitable because of their sizes, because of their places, because of their importance nowadays, that those areas are uh, in danger, uh, particularly to lose some of the significance they'll be having for the city. So it's a really, really rich, um, uh, those are rich locations in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, perspectives, links with the city, the more obvious one, but also the more invisible, less tangible one, material and immaterial. So that's why I think it's so interesting to work in uh, and, to, and to, let's say, reflect upon these areas. Yes, maybe. Thanks. Just Thanks, Roberto. Only one word to respect to this discussion, because yes, uh, story is palimpsest. It's uh, how to work on something that's coming from uh, before, and maybe to understand that, to not lose everything, uh, you have to work with contrast. That's uh, maybe the most uh, efficient way. Because if not, uh, the risk is to uh, lose the perception of uh, what uh, remains. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, Donatella. Yeah, yeah just uh, maybe yeah. very briefly. Uh, I think that uh, we discuss a lot this question in, uh, in our group, in our uh, workshop. Uh, and we try to, to, to give a name uh, to the to approach which is confronting the situation as it is. So we said it's a as found strategy. So and uh, there is uh, some two maybe work that uh, are dealing very precisely with this uh, idea. So not just uh, um, using all the existing building, but also trying to to work with the character of, uh, of this place. Uh, I showed the students some uh, uh, park in uh, Berlin, which are uh, extremely successful. I don't know if you know uh, Tempelhof, was a former uh, Flughafen, also airport. And it's quite incredible how the people uh, use this park and they are absolutely, uh, there was a, a political decision, they are against uh, 
every, every kind of superposition of a new park. So they use the park as it is with a very, very small intervention. But it's quite interesting how they take this, this uh, really infrastructural uh, element as a, as, as a park and, uh, and uh, how they interact with this. And so I think that's there, there is a lot of potential. So to, to see, to, to take care of the small traces of the small, also maybe not so interesting or from a historical point of view, not a, not a monument, not a very, but just this small aspect of the character of the place. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, it's very interesting. Thanks, are there some other consideration? Domenico? Yes, yes, just a, just one minute because it's quite late and uh, you know our guests are maybe a little bit tired. Just to say thank you to all of you. Uh, I feel that this experience is, was a great experience in the middle of the pandemic. It was not easy at all to work online and uh, the results are really wonderful in my opinion, considering you know the situation. And uh, I really appreciate you know, the different point of view and the different approaches that you uh, took in uh, considering, you know, the solution for that area. And uh, um, the Professor Savalente, the Dean, told us how difficult it is to deal with the problem of this specific area in the middle of Milan. So, uh, uh, in my opinion, that was a good experience for the, our study course. And thank you, Camillo, and thank you, the staff, the people that helped us to uh, organize this activity. And uh, I, I strongly believe that, you know, we can maybe in the future think about the, a kind of formula in which one, you know, the um, working together because I saw the students in the middle of the different rooms that they were working, you know, in presence, and many of them they were working in, in online. The, the, this mix, mixing, you know, mixture between working and um, it, it could be a, a chance for us in the future to organize again, you know, this activity or another workshop considering this opportunity. Considering and taking into account the result, the result was, in my opinion, really, really interesting. So thank you very much and thank you, Ilaria, for this op opportunity for us. Thank you very much. That's all. Thanks, Domenico. I think that we have time for the last question or the last consideration. If somebody wants to add something more. No, maybe I have had some probably pragmatic condition of the site that has to do with the unusual size. I mean, I will not talk in terms of the geographical, but in, in terms of the property, you know, it's a huge property, piece of land that has not the constraint of, let's say, the former the, or, or all the other lots that can one can find in the city in order to do something. Let's say, yes, there is a sort of texture of the city that Sometimes it's more related with the, let's say, with the specificity of the land, the, the property of the land, no? It has nothing to do with architectonic uh, intention, if you want. I don't know if I'm clear enough. But there is, I mean, there is a property, no? Uh, of, let's say, one kilometer long. So, the, I think, I'm exaggerating a, a bit in order to put the things much, much more clear. But I think there is an opportunity there or to think even on the quality of the larger scale buildings no? that we cannot find a possibility of doing that in other parts of the city, you know? Even if considering that uh, it is in the city, in the, in the compass city, and this is the crucial point. Yeah, no, no, it's, I mean, it's a huge piece of land, huge of property. I mean, impossible to find elsewhere, no? So, I don't know, but if one see, the, let's say, one of the master plans that I could we have to see, let's say, the size of the building have to do, yeah, of course, they have similar size of the rest of the city, but those sites were mostly uh, defined by the availability of lots, no? Mm. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I think, I think that there is an opportunity to be taken to, of course, do new kind of public space that maybe can, or public or buildings or whatever, that can maybe solve or propose a new experience in the city, new solutions with uh, free of other concerns. Yes, maybe just two words with respect to that, because I'm really, uh, I agree with, uh, with that. And I think in more or less all the projects we saw, there was this uh, search of unity, or through open space, or through building and uh, logical form. But that's surely uh, an element that is common to more, uh, most, uh, most of the projects we saw. And also the, the the biggest relation with, with the bigger scale that was looking looking for. Um, yeah, Donatella. Yeah, I think that's uh, one thing that's uh, because you are talking about uh, the possible how could be the relationship between the city and uh, the, your university, and uh, I think that's uh, for me one thing that is quite clear at, at the end uh, so after a week we are working on this area is that uh, the proposal uh, idea to to have 50 uh, percent uh, uh, park and 50 percent for the for, for the intervention i think that is uh, is not right so i think that uh, it's will really be fantastic if you can fight for more park for a big chunk of park because it's possible maybe to build it in a, a little bit more dense um, with a higher density and to have, uh, so I think that in this part of the city to have a really park will be great. So just uh, thinking about from a, a, a point of view of density. I completely agree with Donatella. I completely agree because it's possible to work well on this area with less cube, with less uh, buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, I just I just wanted to 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 add a few words on what Sebastian said. I mean, it's very very good that the city of Milan is considering all those railway areas together because indeed as you said those are opportunities unique opportunities and usually they are under one property although there is there are some slight difference here and there but those are opportunities and looking at them all together would eventually have a kind of a greater importance for the whole city the 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 other side of the coin as we've heard this morning is that uh, because they are looking at them all together things are interchangeable between them that's what we have uh, understood that there is this tendency which is of course understandable as an enormous forces and uh, and capitals and effort are have to be put together in order to to cope with these huge challenges so uh, there are very positive things, but there are also very many challenges along the way. So and I think it's good that the university keeps on focusing on those areas and work with the city, because uh, sometimes we can also function as an eye opener, as inspiration, as way of establishing other kind of conversations than the usual ones that are taking place uh, elsewhere. Not at university, I mean. Thanks. Uh, I think to, to um, I think that uh, a, a crucial part of the of this area will be uh, so thinking about new form of public space. Something that uh, I learned today from your presentation is that you work a lot about uh, new form, new identity, how to build the public space in this specific site, and uh sometimes replace some traditional more traditional public space as a park other times like in the project of uh, uh, made in the Hervé atelier a different a more innovative public space that perhaps uh, can be moved from the ground to the upper level and uh, i think that uh, this is a great uh, 
thing that we saw today and uh, how to rethink the public space that is a crucial point in the in the city in the in milan in our city how to solve and to introduce some new identity through working on public space and um, another point that I would like also underline is that we have seen a lot of section, a lot of section, astronometric drawings and section. And I think that uh, uh, in this area, for the presence of the rail, of course, uh, the, the, the project have to face the problem to consider different levels of the city, not only the ground or the underground level, but to think also how to manage the different public level in the city, how to move public function on the top and so on. And, uh, and uh, of course, the technical drawing that represent better is the section, or section, and we have seen a lot of wonderful drawing uh, that represent this specific topic. Sorry, only some more consideration, the final consideration. Um, Somebody want to add something more? Okay, so thanks again to everybody and to the, all the students, all the students in is honestly eight days working. I think that uh, we have seen something, I don't know, one year works, not only one week. And uh, I don't know how you have done. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, Thanks to our visiting professor, and uh, we hope to to organize in the future a party as uh, in the previous edition we have done. Usually we finish with a great crazy party, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we will we will meet, we will have to meet in the future after the pandemic period for the great not for the workshop but only for the party. Okay, yes. bring it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Yes, invitation accepted for the party. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and all to the students. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.